Hello everybody, welcome back to the KSCM. It's time for week six. Feels like it's been a little while, but we're here once again with a great lineup. An awesome set of games is to come. Here's game number one. We've got Snow versus Soul Key. Wow, setting out Soul Key first, kind of crazy. Yeah, Soul Key's very good as well. And the lineup is looking <laughs> absolutely monstrous from all three sides. I think all three teams have woken up in the dugouts and realized that everything's still to play for in this season. And every single one of them is a contender for that seed into the finals. And now we see some A-team lineups from every single squad. Real sharp light, absolutely monstrous. Snow best Bisu, that's pretty much the best squad you can put out for Protoss. And Queen, Soul Key, action this is a squad i've been wanting to see for a while yeah queen has been showing up really really well lately um i've been enjoying his play quite a bit uh, you're totally right that everybody is in the running for this season now it's like it's very close we haven't had a super close season like this for a while right yeah i mean we were just talking a little bit about it um off, off script just a moment ago and it's kind of fascinating how this this particular season of kcm has been absolutely wild and um the, the points uh, represent that i think uh, because in the other seasons we had a lot more flat lines and teams just kind of like relegating themselves to that semi-final playoffs and this season everything's been like going kind of crazy the games have been really intense very tempo-y and back and forth and now it seems like yeah everyone's like waking up and i don't know if it's like things like you know flashes back in the scene and like everyone's then got a fire lit under their asses all of a sudden or there's a few other things that factor but yeah for whatever reason we've got an absolute banger of a season of kcm and seems like all the teams are really up for it yeah, the new announcement for psl as well should be uh, giving those these players a, a little bit more motivation that the qualifier is actually coming up really soon here in july um for that brand new tournament if you haven't heard about it there's an announcement on my channel just barely not blocking that snow opens with the forge fast expand and uh, not quite able to stop this hatcher from going down off the overpool Yes, yeah, wild to think about that if Soki was even just a tiny bit off in his middle optimizations, he might not have gotten that hatchery down. It's, uh, yeah, uh, very, very interesting to think about. Um, kind of, he might, he might get this drone. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried. He's doing a good job now of buying some time with the extra drone before the links come out. Does lose him a mineral cycle worth of minerals, but happy price to pay to keep that drone alive and now we got the first four lings out i would say yeah four lings kind of makes it seem like sulky wants to be maybe a little bit sneaky this game like he really wants to kill this probe despite knowing that it's probably not going to be a gateway opening so usually when you make four lings this early you want to you know catch this probe because you don't usually need four lings right away it's going to be some time before the, the zealot gets out usually by about 19 supply you want to start going up to like six zerglings from your initial two Solki is one of those players that I never really worry too much about him making uh, early links. Like sometimes he does overcommit. He has like way too many and gets himself into a bad spot. But usually he manages to utilize his links better than any other Zerg player. Like especially in Zerg versus Terran, not in this matchup, but he is able to, you know, crush Marine Medic balls out on the map that type of thing where uh, other zerg players just would end up wasting their lings he seems to always make them worthwhile yeah and he's such a good macro player that um as long as he doesn't get slowed down too much he, he usually does have such a great mid and late game performance and he's he's not afraid to make small sacrifices in the early game to ensure that he gets there Mm -hmm. And uh, th this style is um, very popular with even players like Zealot actually opening falling. Um, if you're not drone scouting, you've got just a little bit extra minerals to squeeze out that extra pair of Zergling. So it's, it's not too much of a dent in your economy to invest in it anyway. And being able to chase down this scouting probe and obfuscate your build order choice is really important in ZVP. So it's pretty worth it. Yeah, he's going to be going for some sort of Hydralis bust here. He's caught the probe on the left hand side. He's not allowing it to get in. It's cycling over and over and over again snow checking to see if there's a lapse in 
uh, attention from Soul Key, but none has been found thus far. Two zealots are out on the map. He would really like to come in. If he senses that the links are out of position, he'll try to come across this map and um, get some scouting information. But you know what? He actually sends the zealots back home. I think he walked up the ramp uh, in view of the overlord just to make it look like he was coming to try and force extra links. But now he's back home in the wall. And there are quite a bit of links that have been produced, but this is fine for Solki. These links are going to be very useful for the following uh, Hydralis bust. Yeah, um, and Solki's trying to like represent that he's doing like a very standard like go into like a fast tech build and he's just making these initial speed links to like deal with any kind of zealot pressure because right now you have three zealots so he wants to have at least like you know 10, 12 zerg links just to make sure that you can't come out and just kill drones for free. So it's not super crazy that he's making these links from Snow's perspective either and the fact that the cannon is actually like pretty close to the wall like this you don't even necessarily need hydro speed to, to bust you can just go with um, um, hydro range to bust sorry you just need to go in with the hydro hydros to shoot over the wall while the lings soak up the zealots so you can do a more like ling heavy hydro bust and he's making it look like he's just got like one or two hydros chilling to defend against this corsair to kind of obfuscate things a little bit just for a few extra precious seconds as he starts to rally these units across now will he commit to this or, or will he not so far i don't see any additional drones popping out but he is he's got the like bare minimal amount of units right now i think he actually will commit to this and just use the lings to soak up and then use the a few speed hydros to pick off the cannon the extra cannons are finishing up now. Three cannons in the back line. Those are a little bit harder to reach with the uh, Hydras without range, but they can hit this uh, the forge here in the front, and they will get to work on that. Uh, he should be able to pick that off before uh, plus one is done, and re-droning up behind this. Soul Key not going to commit to this attack. Just take the forge and maybe the gateway and then back off that's most likely the plan we're gonna see yeah yeah snow's really respecting the chance of sulky just coming in here with the ling hydra and he does have to do that you, you can't just make two three cannons against this he'll just run in and kill everything if he commits to the attack so very wise response from snow but it is now going to slow him down a lot and this fake fake hatch um two or three hatch hydra it's um, i would say been pretty successful like even if he loses like one overlord here it's not the end of the world so yeah i would say all things considered like soul keeps looking great in this early game it looks like one maybe two overlords goes down good targeting here by soul keys really trying to get one of these getting it very very low can he actually pick that off no Wow, very well done here by Snow. Three kills on that one Corsair. It's very annoying while you're trying to make this transition back into drones in production. Yeah, I mean, that's actually pretty good for Snow. That's the enough compensation that he's not just, like, feeling sour about the early game completely. Like, if you only got one Overlord kill for that, then it, you, you feel pretty salty. But now that he's got something, a little bit of a supply block, it's, 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 some, it's some wind in the sails for him to work with. He's going to be soft-contained for the time being. Um... Sulky may even consider doing like a... I don't think he... Yeah, he might actually just go and go for it right now. He wants to put on some pressure and see if he can get some good trades. At least force off probes off the line. Trade off some of these Zerglings that you might not be able to utilize later as well. But I'm not sure that's going to be too fruitful. Meanwhile, back at home, losing some of these critical overlords. So, Sulky, if he wants to continue this, has to commit to a bust. But I don't think he should. And he's... he's I, I would say this isn't the best of choices from Sulky at the moment. Unfortunately, he only left one Hydralis back at home, so he was still losing Overlords during this, and he can't really produce much right now. He wants to be droning and getting into a better position, but he's sending a few more Hydras across the map. It's not enough to bust Snow right. wide open, and it's not um, drones back at home, so I don't really understand where Sulky's going with this. Is he actually just going to try it? and break through before nine minutes it's kind of looking like it now there's only four cannons but that's a lot of zealots and we've got plenty of gateways to keep reproducing this with speed finished can he actually do it yeah i mean storm is just about to start coming online but right now is pure zealot cannon and there is a bit of a critical mass of hydras now starting with in position some zerglings as well being made to rally across the map a little bit faster to come in and see if you can bust the position of and there's a lot of zealots and probes coming off the line to drill back against these hydras as well and there's not enough surface area for the hydras to get on top of these cannons at the time being the most most they can hope for is whittling down the zealot count and then going in for round two but there's still enough cannons left over without a strong enough hydra threat that now the high temple is going to come online it's still going to be like a good 20 or so seconds before the storms actually have enough uh, enough energy to storm but yeah i think he's held i think uh, we're going to go to the mid game uh, now i don't think sulky's going to be able to kill him 
Question is, did Solki kill enough probes during that fight? He did pick off, like, I would say five to six probes, but it really doesn't feel like it's quite enough damage for the amount of commitment that he put into that attack, all the drones that he didn't build back at home, all the overlords that he lost uh, while the fighting was going on. He is not quite set up in every base with good Sim City just yet. And now the Zealots are out on the map, they're going to start hitting random locations and pulling Soul Key apart. Let's see if he's got the metal here to challenge these Zealots. Uh, and well, I think... Yeah, stop them from dealing big damage. Go ahead. I think he's going to buy time for Mutalisks here. I think he's just going to, like, uh, consider an Ogrezerg type play mm. in the sense, not, not in the sense of trying to kill um, Snow, but just maybe to get enough Mutas to snipe um, the High Templars and bully back these um, Zealots. But the beautiful timing from these Zealots come in just as the Hydras rotate out from their southwest, south left base here. So now he's going to get a lot of damage onto the drones. And as the Hydras coming back in, I'm going to trade super well either. So this is great damage from Snow. Like, a lot of lost mine time and he killed some drones and he's getting pretty good trades against the units as well but i think sulky has identified that there's not a lot of corsairs out only two corsairs have are alive and no more in production so now that he switched into the spy if he got up like say 10 meters and started just running in and sniping all these high templars he could just mow him down with hydras afterwards yeah if he has a bunch of scourge popping at the same time he could just go for the main base as well there's nothing in yeah. there there's no cannons um and then if he just controls the the stargate he could go for that as a win condition. Now, picking off the DT before it even gets in here, this is a nice move, but that's completely revealed the strategy from Sulky. All of these Mutalists are now a known threat, and cannons are going to start going up en masse in the, in the main base. He may start making an Archon as well. Running back home right now, but the Templars are badly exposed. If Sulky knew about them right there, I think he'd go right after them. Nice storms on these advancing... Mutas is going to soften them up a little bit, but it doesn't do very much, and there's not enough Scourge to take this fight. One of them goes down already. Nice storm there to pick off those Scourge. I don't think he can actually fight this. There's still two uh, Saris and some Storms to help out. He will be pushed back. Yeah, the, the, just enough Neutron Flares landed on those um, Mutas to soften them up as well. Usually, like, six Mutas would beat two Corsairs, but when they're that low HP, the Corsairs would have a field day with them. So, yeah, Snow has weathered the storm right now, and there was a moment there where he was at risk of losing a lot of his high templars to those mutes because they were just completely out of position he bought a little bit of time by running his zealots down to soak up some shots and bait them into targeting the zealots instead and those few precious seconds has kind of paid off a little bit for him here he's gonna come back into the main base there's a couple of scourge to zone out the corsairs here i don't think he's gonna get more than just a couple of dragoon kills maybe a couple of probe kills but if the, if the scourge was able to connect on these corsairs then i think he would continue to come into the main base and be annoying because he's not finding anything like being able to catch a corsair here or there i think he's gonna have to abandon the these efforts and just go into like super mid to late game macro mode that's where i like to see a soul key play from that macro mode is so scary with it he's actually got a little bit of a group of units in the top left hand corner controlling making sure that there's not another base coming up but he is probably going to try and break this base right now um fourth base is on the way on sulky's side so he does have a future plan he has a, a follow-up uh, if this doesn't work but he's trying to break open this base he actually turns around and heads back home now more mutas are being made what is going on with sulky yeah i don't think he's like committed to breaking it i think he's just literally probing for weaknesses to because he has baited out a lot of storms from snow so he knows there was a chance that maybe that that, that position was a little bit weaker than usual but i think he's identified that it's, it's not safe to attack into that position he's going to instead just keep going back into the main base kind of like a way out of an ogazerg still even though there's not a lot of corset and not a lot of scourge to catch these corsets says there's still quite a sizable muta stack here and the, the corsair are in low enough number for the time being that the, the mutas aren't too scared to run in there here and there but eventually those mutas are going to want to like wait and you know kind of sit back and wait for more scourge support because as um, he keeps adding on more and more corsairs the the, the threat of the mutas will diminish however also snow inversely isn't too comfortable with the fact that he's got to keep dumping in extra gas into these corsairs it really does cut into his dragoon and templar production as well well, with that third gas coming online, Snow is going to have plenty of resources to continue this fight. His fourth base, though, is a question. Where is he going to be able to take that? Very mobile army we have right now from Sulky. No lurkers available. 
Uh, he is just going pure Hydralisk and hoping to snipe a bunch of the Templars in this upcoming fight. That's quite a bit of Corsairs, though, now. They will be able to push back the Mutas uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, he's got two, two upgrades on this ground army as well, due to making the upgrades relatively close together. So pretty strong army right now. I think Sulky is just on like pretty standard, like plus two weapon attack upgrade right now. Hasn't even yet made the hive, despite identifying the fact that we have this third base online for snow. So seems like he's kind of content to stay battle zerg for a little bit here. But yeah, eventually he's, he's going to start making this hive in just a few moments. But he's going to be very reliant on these lurkers and hydras to get something um, uh, to get something done when the battles start to occur because his, his tech is going to be relatively quite a lot later than Snow's and uh, that might come back to haunt him in a few minutes time. This big ball of Protoss moving through the middle of the map is really scary right now. There's a lot of storms available. Um, it's kind of covering for this fourth base which is going to be taken at the mineral only. Sulky's not expecting that. He's continuing to send Lings up to the top left just to make sure that that Extra base doesn't get online for free, which is a great move by him, but Snow's not going to worry about that for now. He's just going to focus on the push and tr trading effectively here in the middle of the map. Picking off groups of Lings is amazing, and, you know, casting storms on groups of Lurkers and Hydras is what he's looking for. Mutas, are they just going to dive, like, into the main or something? What is he going to do with these? while the Corsairs are on the other side of the map. Here they come. They're actually coming back. The Corsairs are coming back. The Scourge are ready, though. We get some good connections here. Moving shot is good from Snow. Dealing a lot of damage to these Mutas. There's the Scourge, but all the Mutas are dead. Okay, there's six Mutas left, but they're all going to die to one Corsair. That's crazy. Yeah, that's kind of wild. It's, yeah, it's like we were saying about just a moment ago, like once the Mutas are softened up, even just a couple of Corsairs like, are so much more dangerous to those Mutalisks and... Yeah, that one observer being there kind of gave Snow just barely enough reaction time to not take too many losses as well. But uh, eventually he did lose pretty much the entirety of his Corsair fleet. So now Sulky's got a choice. Okay, do I want to keep trying to see if I can get away with some mutant shenanigans? Or do I want to just, like, you know, consider the fact that you've got too many Dragoons now? Or, like, how does Sulky want to play from this position? Because I don't think Snow wants to make any more Corsairs, that's for sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Are we going to go back into Mutalus here? It would be a bit of a gamble, but... It could be a, the gamble that pays off and helps him to win this game. This is a great defensive position here on the high ground, but there are so many storms available for Snow right now. He's just storming every single thing that comes up here onto the high ground, and you can bet he's going to be storming these big groups of lurkers that just burrowed up on top of each other. He goes for the storm, but a great split from Sulky, keeping a lot of those alive. Cannot storm through the sunken, so he's actually got to get a little bit closer here. So many storms, man. That's like yeah. 10 storms, 12 storms that just got laid down there, but Sulky still has more coming out. Looks like he did make one mute at least, but that's just going to get thrown in. He is in a bit of a panic mode right now as he tries to pull everything together and brings in a big wide uh, flank here on the left hand side. I think that Snow will break that flank, but he's running low on storms. He's casted so many at this point that it's just a matter of time before Sulky can start to make some progress. Yeah, it's so hard to like set up these counter um, uh, like pincer maneuvers from Zerg once you unburrow and reburrow your luck because they're usually stacked and makes it that much easier for the Protoss player to storm your units into oblivion. That's kind of what we saw a little bit there. I mean, Sulky's just barely got enough that he might start cleaning up this army, which is a pretty big deal. He's cutting off the head of the dragon. If he stops this from rejoining with any additional forces, it will maybe keep the, the Protoss infantry weak enough that he can't just keep coming out onto the map in a big way and give Sulky a bit more life into this uh, late game here. And uh, I think Snow is just going to be content to just, like, you know, expand again and macro up. But I think now that Defiler tech is out and if Plague starts to become a thing again, I think Sulky's doing just fine here. It's just that he's got to weather the storm, make sure he doesn't take any damage right now. I think the Protoss army is now small enough that he's he's pretty comfortable though. Yeah, that was beautifully done by Sulky. Absolutely fantastic the way he was able to bring those units from different angles to clear out that army. Now cannons warping in here. We've got cracklings hitting this nexus. Can he actually pick it off? It's so close. He's killing a lot of probes regardless. The army is actually making its way back so I think Snow will save it. Great snipe there on the Templar as well. Just yeah. like I was talking about earlier, Sulky's so good with just small groups of Lings. He always seems to make them way more valuable than anyone else, any other Zerg player. 
Yeah, you usually don't see it. It's, it's, if you can, like, snipe just one or two High Templars here and there with a few Zerglings, that's crazy value. Training out, like, your mineral units for gas is just, like, so valuable for Zerg. And uh, it's so difficult to do as well. So it's really impressive to see a macro player able to keep up with this level of, like, you know, task switching. And against, like, someone like Snow, it's, it's extreme, extremely impressive, Sam. What do we have for upgrades? 1-1 one, one is done on these Zerglings, so they're still quite a ways behind the uh, Protoss army, which is now 3-3. Three, three. Means that the Lings are not going to trade very well, but we are about to have Defilers on the field pretty soon. Well, that's kind of pretty much how ZVP goes. I mean, the, the Lings don't really become online until the plague even becomes a thing. Like, even with adrenal glands, which they already have right now. Like, yeah, the, the upgrades are usually slower and behind the, the Protoss player. And with, with the plague, though, being able to shred through that high armor HP hit, hit of health pools, the shields don't really stack up against that because there's no upgrades on those. So you will just shred through this Protoss army if you can get one or two plagues on it. So far, just uh, relegating himself to throwing down some Dark Swarms until that tech comes online. So just so we can survive and maintain the game state right now. He's got control over this like center of the board, which is very necessary for Sulky. So he doesn't want a repeat of what we saw earlier. We'll be let the Protoss player come up to our Sim City and be able to storm storm us where our units are clumped up at the rally points. It's just not a good place to be in a Zerg. So instead he's keeping the pressure on with some link counter attacks and keeping this big like spread of units out in the center of the board to prevent snow from coming in on these like tight vectors of attack and exploiting the geometry of the map. We should have Plague just about finished now. Dark Swarms are coming down to keep Snow back for now. But Snow is getting close to this rally point. And he's trying to move around the left-hand side of this. He's just trading with his Storms and his... Oh, there's the Plague. Very nicely done there on the back line. Getting a bunch of the Zealots back there. And the Dragoons as well. It looks like he's just trying to get up on top of this high ground. A lot of the Storms have been used, but this is exactly what Snow wants, is to utilize the Storms, kill a whole bunch of units, and then back away and let those Storms regenerate. Yeah, that's basically like how Protoss fight against Zerg 101. You don't even necessarily need to like commit to killing the Zerg. It's great if you can like sit on top of the production line and just kill units as they're being made. But generally speaking, you're just looking to skirmish, engage, storm and run out. That's like, you know, basically how Protoss want to operate. And they never want to like lose the head of the dragon. They want to keep the dragon strong as possible. So you just see them rejoining with the army over and over again and making a bigger and bigger death pool, utilizing the dragoons as siege tanks to try and snipe them the lurkers that are out of position and to provide some better bodyguarding for these critical high templar units so they can get off their sonic storms now i don't think that sulky wants to push up to the center left he wants to deny it from snow but he's trying to take the island on the right hand side at the moment he's got drones over there mining up those minerals and eventually we'll be putting down hatches he's pushing forward here to try and get some more uh, plagues but this doesn't feel to me like a full commitment to try and take center left he really just wants to hold the center of the map on the left hand side and uh, get these island bases up and operational as quickly as possible yeah, but um, Soki will definitely try and take this high ground position. Um, it's just going to be a challenge for him to do so. It's a much harder, uh, wider area to worry about if he can't already get set up onto that high ground with lots of lurkers and what have you. And he, he doesn't want to spread himself too thinly before it's time. But ideally, this is the thing that Soki wants to play for. These bases are on the right, are just like his insurance policy, just to not like you know lose the game purely based on economics. But really, the, the, the game is coming down to whether or not he lets Snow get this base on the nine o'clock position because if snow can take that it's pretty much uh, game over maybe for for sulky he, he knows that's a possibility whereas if he if sulky can stop snow from taking this and then at some point take it himself he can win a war of attrition with snow which is like a much better game state for super league game now i'm really surprised to see snow has his dark archon in the main base um i thought that he was going to be bringing that out really a moment of brilliance of just bringing that to the front and starting to feed back these defilers before they can get their plagues off but Instead, he's got it kind of chilling in the main, maybe waiting for a yeah. drop or something like that, expecting that play. I think a drop, but also just the, the, the possibility of like even just like a few muters coming in being annoying and like say killing High Templars when they're popping out of gateways. He never wants to make a single Corsair ever again. So it's like, I'm just going to keep you chilling there as like a little bit of an insurance policy. Maelstrom a drop, Maelstrom any muters and yeah, just kind of buy himself any time against any shenanigans just because he doesn't want to dump any gas into Corsairs right now. Well, he's uh, eating a lot of plagues, and the Defilers are getting a ton of value by throwing down spells over and over again. So, a little bit unfortunate he doesn't have that Dark Archon here to try and counter that. 
that is difficult to use of course all the different spells that you're already juggling as the a Protoss player makes that a little bit difficult to pull off but I think that that would be the X factor that could maybe uh, help Snow to take the center left he's trying to get the base up now but Snow is taking some great trades with all the plagues and dark storms he's throwing down yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty, even though the supplies are like maxed out for Snow and like only 140 for Sulky, this is actually a pretty healthy game, all things considered. I mean, and Plague will be the, the deciding factor in these these engagements and it, so, um, Snow is just now starting to add shield upgrades as well. So even with the Plague units, there'll be a little bit of damage mitigation on those shield hit points. They won't just get completely obliterated, but I mean, we got three, two on these cracklings already. So uh, even with, with Plague right now, these units will die extremely exceedingly quick and now with some Nidus canals set up so we can start drone transferring around to those island pocket expansions so he's going to come online in a big way the only problem is is that he's been unable to shut snow out from taking this base at nine o'clock so he has kind of put himself in a bit of a precarious situation because there'll be a, a lot of um, jostling for position over this um, island expansion on the left hand side which sulky won't really be able to, to take unless he's winning the game and that's going to be really tough because he can just get stormed into oblivion if he does end up taking that. So a little bit concerned for Sulky in the super late game state. He needs to start trading really well right now and start um, crushing this army of snow. Yeah, the cracklings are doing a great job now with those uh, evened out upgrades, you know, killing off dragons so quickly. Zealots as well. Uh, zealots are not able to two hit anymore. These cracklings uh, with that three armor. So they will be trading so much better here. This is the moment yeah. for Soul Key to start to push through. He's really trying hard with the Cheeto Dust to just break these positions, but Snow is doing a great job of moving forward when he can, uh, storming when he needs to, and then backing up uh, when the trades are unfavorable, when the storm cloud is right in front of him. Um, he's just doing such a great job of trading out every single time here. It's pretty impressive, and he will lose quite a bit of Zealots there. Uh, the Archon number is just getting so high, though. <laughs> Look at how many Archons are in this. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of has to be done, though. I mean, like, eventually Zealots become less and less relevant, and now now we've got the upgrades um, at 3 for Zerg. Yeah, um, yeah, you just don't trade well with Zealots anymore. You might make a few to tank up, uh, cycle up a little bit of damage, but the majority of units will be into this sort of Dragoon, Archon, Templar style, and then eventually adding on Reavers to both defend and have some ways of assaulting this island base in a, in a little bit here. And Sulky's really pushing the issue up here, but now these clumped up lurkers are going to get stormed, unfortunately. Like, he fought there was no more storm available here and he was going to try and like wedge in between this expansion and open up the position a bit more but it's just so much left in reserve for snow in terms of utility that he's able to keep storming these packs of units to death and sulky really wants to come in here and open this position up before reavers start to be, be made here and that's too late now reavers are going to start popping out here and oh, beautiful plague though that's a monster of a plague if sulky can just keep plaguing this army into oblivion he might still have a chance the problem is that plague will also have a little bit less value the more that time progresses because plague's not so good against archons and reavers and stuff compared to just like pure like you know zealot goon templar so yeah like like at the moment, Soki's doing pretty good, but it's good spiral out of control if he's not able to do something soon. This Ling pack is hilarious. It was waiting on the top center for so long, yeah. and it finally comes in now at 3-3, becoming a lot more of a threat, but it's not going to be able to break uh, the base. It's not going to be able to kill that assimilator either. Uh, Solki is having a hard time making any progress, and like you said, the battle for center right is going to be very difficult for for Solki. He would much rather keep all the attention on the left hand side here, um, and not deal with you know storm drops and storms over the walls uh, to his drones, which is going to happen a little bit later on if he doesn't crack the space. Yeah, this is the the weird situation we're going to find ourselves in because even though Solki's got this sort of like island base, so he's got an, an extra base to add add to his retinue later on. It doesn't really matter. You kind of need to be one base ahead of the Protoss anyway. So in these split map positions. You kind of need to leverage that additional base into stopping them from getting one as well. So it's going to be rough for him having to defend against that. And I think Snow's banking on being able to win that way later on. That's why he's just comfortable just trading to death right now. He made quite a few Zealots, but now the army's a little bit out of position and starting to get mowed down by Sulky. The units on the left getting flanked. So, um, looks like Snow's trying to get some compensation by diving into the mineral line. If he can maybe kill some drones or something, maybe that'll compensate for losing a, a pretty sizable chunk of his army, to be honest. It's 160 supply to 100. 136 right now actually the smallest of a gap that we've had in supplies for quite some time if Sulky can gobble up this army 
and get back out on the map again, maybe there's a lot more hope for him in this game. Yeah, that was kind of crazy by Snow. He just sent everything in and lost his entire Archon army. He is remaxing on a lot of Reavers and Templar, which is amazing for his composition, but yeah, that was uh, that was a serious loss. So much got, yeah. went down there, and there's an opportunity now for Solki to break into the center left and actually take over the space. There's really not much here for Snow, uh, aside from the Reavers, which are very powerful, but are easily popped when the, the plague is placed down on them earlier. Yeah, the, the strength of the Protoss is in having such a strong death pool to field, and now that it's in this small, like, like piecemeal formations, it's much easier to gobble up by Zerg, even with just a handful of units. So these nice plagues coming down the Reavers are, are like the kind of things that will spell the end for Snow, because at the moment, he, he looks like he's got a lot right now, but he's actually like mined out on three bases, and he's not got a lot of gas coming in right now. So if Snow can get in here and kill some of these critical Reaver units, is going to be huge. Snow can't produce endlessly this is basically a, a battle of attrition right now and if Solki's doing better on the trades for the time being if he can keep trading like this and keep the army of snow small enough it's going to be a really rough spot for snow i would be remiss not to mention the asl uh, semi-finals on this map or when the two of these players battled it out on this map it's turning into one of those great uh, battles once again, one of those amazing uh, blitz Y battles of attrition that we've seen before. Now trying to get on top of this Reaver, it's got 11 kills and only 2 HP. Oh my one goodness. Hit. One more hit from one Zergling. He's just going to go for it. Throwing in a few more Lings just to ensure that kill. The Defiler over here on the left-hand side will get another Plague on some more of these Reavers. That one's already been Plagued. Two more Reavers are in the back, though. Really needs to get a Plague on those as well if he wants to break the space. Yeah, I mean, this is buying valuable time for Soki to get this other expansion online. If he can start mining for free without worrying about being stormed while mining, that's also very comfortable for Soki. Like we were saying earlier, if he keeps all the attention diverted to this left-hand flank, that's going to be great for Soki going forward. But he needs to keep winning as soon as he starts losing it's going to be rough for him like he needs to keep the, the advantage while he's got it he's throwing down beautiful plagues the dark archons now finally come down from the main base to help out a little bit all hands on deck every little piece of utility will be required to try and finesse this now with feedback available we can start sniping some of these critical defilers and preventing them from just coming in and playing for each time it's so important to start doing this uh feedback action it, it's yeah. insanely good because you have to remember that uh, defilers take time to come out and if you don't have a defiler ready um you could just be broken at any of these positions all of a sudden the protoss player will just break through without dark swarm available nice snipe on that shuttle i'm not sure if there was a reaver in there i don't think there was but uh, that's some critical uh, movement speed that's been removed from those reavers it's preventing them from getting into good positions to actually uh, skirmish with this army and snow's kind of at the mercy of sulky right now when does he want to jump in it's completely up to sulky when he wants to take this fight and he is getting prepared he's gathering up his forces he's only got 141 supply but he's just about ready i think to try an, another attempt on this base he's bringing everything yeah. together and he's gonna try and break that position it's all gonna come down to this can snow hold yeah, he's, he's got just a massive amount of army to leverage right now, but it's really tough to leverage it against the Protoss player. He needs to be careful not to send it all in on attack move and get stormed to death. So Solki's going to try and push up a little bit more to the north first so he can wrap around and set up a massive concave here to swallow up this army from all angles. And that's probably the best way of dealing with this and also keeping his units as spread as possible. He's whittling down like some few critical units of snow before going in here, which is very important to do. He's also cutting off the retreat right now. Sorry, the reinforcements from snow right now as well stopping this army from joining but he's going to the north with this ling i think is he going to go to the top left and try and kill this gas to, to deny some gas mining here or is he just trying to keep the army back i'm really confused by sulky's uh putting lings up here at the north he might be able to get in there on the top left and possibly snipe the nexus it's it's potentially viable but with uh, the army of snow coming up here just deal with that doesn't really end up being a great trade 
um, the Dark Archon being so helpful in these fights, like right as he wants to pull the trigger, he wants to come forward here, throw down the plagues and the Dark Swarms. Snow keeps dropping feedbacks and actually killing off these uh, defilers. There's another one. See, he was just about ready to go in for a big attack, and that just completely resets his momentum every single time that happens. Yeah, feedback is such a strong spell, guys. It only costs 50 energy, has a long range, and your, your Dark Archon moves faster than Defiler. Defiler only has base speed 4, so as long as you're reacting fast enough, you can keep killing them, and as long as the, there's enough energy on the Defiler to kill it, say 100 plus energy, it'll die every time, and if they want to Plague, you better believe it's got more than 100 energy. So yeah, great use of spell from Snow. If you can keep on top of things and keep whittling down this force of Sulky as he tries to come up here, I think yes, he might just have enough to do it, despite the fact that Sulky's mining for free at this base of no pressure right now at three o'clock. Great storm there, hitting three lurkers once again. He's gonna go ahead and uh, you know consume and as he comes forward are we gonna get the feedback again no no feedback this time but uh he has the energy to do so and every, yeah, every time he comes forward there's an opportunity to feedback there it is he does it again he gets the dark swarm on top of everything though it's very close to the uh, entrance to this base but there's so many reavers here it's so hard to break through soul key is playing a great uh attacking game like he's really putting on a lot of pressure here like you said taking away the attention of snow from the center right but snow is just playing an excellent defense like every single time sulky tries to come forward he's constantly shutting him down do we need something else do we need like a drop into the main or something what can we do here sulky to pull the attention away for snow I think some, yeah, maybe ah. some, oh, here comes the pressure onto this base that we were talking about. It's really annoying when you have to start dealing with this because it doesn't cost the Protoss a lot of resources to come down here and start storming over the wall and what have you. And now Sulky is going to be distracted on two fronts, allowing Snow to push out and start opening up this position and punishing the weakness of Sulky. Sulky's trying to get some counter going low, he swallows up this army with some uh, very spot fast Zerglings to prevent them from retreating. We'll clear up the majority of these Archons though. It's actually a pretty reasonable trade for Sulky, but but he was trading at a bit of a deficit leading up to this, so it's not as good as he would like it to be. He's now starting to dry up minerals right now. He's only mining from this, these, this base over here. So now, like I was saying earlier, we've got this weird war of attrition style where Snow's been able to mine on this 9 o'clock base, more or less unpeated, and Soki's only barely even with him in terms of what economy he's got provided to him because he, um, he can mine gas indefinitely. He's getting 75 gas from all... 75 gas a minute per all depleted geysers. So as long as Snow just doesn't Die. he can make templars infinitely he can just keep making templar and that means infinite archons that's what he needs to deal with the majority ling armies that sulky is able to field at this point in the game it's really starting to dry up everywhere and every single time he kills one of these defilers it's such a big setback for sulky he's got some gas remaining but not very much and having to keep on making defilers that consume units to use energy which he can't even use because the the feedback came through and just killed the defiler before it gets its spell off i mean it's so difficult to deal with and he gets a great play here he might be able to push this back but good storms getting thrown down dark swarm comes out on these lurker eggs but lurker eggs just going to be stormed absolutely to death i think that snow may have done it here he's broken the middle there it is snow does it he's not able to take it down on blitz y during the asl but he gets his revenge here in kzm absolutely fantastic game from him wow what a way to start off a week of kzm an insane first game um catharsis here for snow after taking out uh, soul key there on blitz y uh, I just remember him forgetting to mine off of the gas in that ASL game. You remember that, Shin, in the bottom left-hand corner? Oh, yeah. He forgot to mine the gas, and then in that previous game, uh, Solki almost poking him by going up with the lings and trying to kill that gas guy. So realizing how important that was to Snow's ultimate victory. Like, maybe if I just kill this, maybe you'll forget to mine it or something. <laughs> <laughs> but snow keeps everything alive keeps the wheels on holds on for dear life to the center left and just sulky not able to break him 
kind of an insane result for Solki, the two-time ASL champion, to get taken out first here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't expect him to be to dealt with so efficiently by Snow. I was really impressed by Snow's ability to utilize that late game army with the feedbacks to just completely dominate those 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 trades, despite them going not his way always. So, yeah, really impressive from Snow. I'm, I'm loving to see his PVZ in much better shape than it used to be. He's a much more well-rounded player as a result. And how can we up against a Royal? Another crazy strong ASL player who's got maybe not quite as uh, long of history of, of uh, success as someone like Solki, but in more recent times, certainly so. Oh yeah, Royal is a serious contender and really every single player here today is an ASL contender. And we don't have any kind of wild cards thrown into this lineup. It's just straight up killers on all sides. Yeah. Um, Royal here, what do you think he's going to pull out against Snow? Are we going to see a really modern style or um, what kind of necessary Terran strategy do you think is going to come out to beat Snow in this game? Mm. Well, it depends on how seriously he's going to take Snow's uh, Reaver control because we could just see him, you know, want to go straight into a five factory kind of play and then go from there whether or not he wants to commit to an attack or expand off of that five factory. I don't, I don't think he would play like, say, how someone like Flash would want to play and try and go into like, you know, more tech heavy options as Terran, as, especially on this map. I don't think it's uh, the best of choice. Uh, Terran seems to be a lot more happier with taking this mineral expansion on this map. I think for a long time, uh, we saw a little bit of confusion in Terran players and where they should take their third base. And then they, for, for a while, they thought that taking these these pocket bases at 6, um, 3, and 12, and 9 were a bit easier to defend. But it seems like there's constantly been a bit of shift in mentality with the Terran players and when where they feel like they should be expanding to. I'm curious what choice Royal goes for this game, if he's going to take this mural only or not. This map is really unique in that there's a lot of uh, walls to abuse here as the Terran. Nice job picking off that SCV, just making sure that he can't get in. Uh, just relentless chasing that down. But about the map here, uh, if you can hold like 12 o'clock as Royal and then you get your mineral only online uh, or vice versa if you go in the opposite direction you then have an amazing place to launch out an attack on the map generally on a lot of maps uh you lock down your four, uh, four bases you don't have like a great way to come out without having the protoss set up in a surround around your army to just then you know crush that first move out here we've got a big open position to move out into the middle of the map or we can take that uh, side path down towards uh, the Protoss and Natural. So there's a lot of options once you get onto four base here as the Protoss. Your uh, main base is still very wide open. Like uh, you're not surrounded by all your bases, but you are uh, able to push out into a wide open area uh, with your first big attack. Now, it doesn't mean that Royal is going to necessarily play for four bases here and try to take this late. He might go for some craziness. He might go for some drops. Maybe, uh, you know, a six, seven fact all in play uh, could be a good idea here as well. Um, it just remains to be seen what he wants to go for. Right. And he, he did throw down the very fast um, armory here, I believe. I think he went armory into eBay. And you, you basically have um, tech choices as Terran. When do you make your armory, your eBay, and your academy? Those are like the three main tech choices. And when you make them very heavily dictate um, what will happen in that game. And usually you can't afford to do all three. So you pick two of those three and you pick which sequence you're going to do those in. And it does seem like he's elected to throw down the armory first. Tries to come in and get some shots on this tank. Needs to be careful uh, not to lose this tank here. Snow's really adamant in trying to get some damage uh, done with that. But luckily not able to... Uh, get the snipe on that tank for Royal here. Does have these free SCVs just chilling, buying time, repairing, paying the little Protoss tax, just for time for Siege to finish. But yeah, it looks like um, going into eBay Armory, I, I, I would say like we're probably going to see a more like 2-1 timing push kind of style out of Royal here. Not like a super crazy like upgrade style like we might see out of Flash where he goes early two Armories, but yeah, very strong uh, timing attack in the mid game here, I think, coming out of Royal. Just the two factories thus far. Four gateways, though, start up. Snow is going to get his first observer into the main base pretty soon to actually see what's coming out of Royal. 
and there's no turret ring set up just yet there's a basic turret ring uh around the factories and stuff but there's nothing preventing the scout from snow he should be able to get in here and see practically everything has the robotic support bay coming down it's going to be a bit of a later reaver here from snow but this is not crazy at all it's pretty normal these days for uh, Protoss players to delay that reaver a bit and just come in a little bit um, delayed no. uh, rather than trying to rush that reaver into the main base like they used to snow actually has only one way of getting into the main base with the observer on the left side on the right hand side of the bunker because there's actually three very key positions of turrets and that's a great body block from those dragoons getting a lot of damage onto those vultures only one vulture getting out onto the map is a bit annoying but he does need to get this vulture out on the map quite desperately though because he didn't really like go into early academy for comsats we have no information whatsoever he's completely in the dark so having at least something out on the map to like you know have some opportunity to run around and check to see if there's a fourth base being taken crazy early or just to doubly check to make sure there's actually a third base there and those kind of things are going to be important and snowy knows that as well he's got his dragoon sitting on a big white arc right now to deny this vulture being able to come in here you see that second armory Shin? he's gonna go That's double the... armory he's it's going more flash style. yeah this is yeah. flash style for sure this is uh, not just Flash, but everybody about uh, three, four years ago, I'd say, was playing yeah, in this exact same way. Yeah, this is upgrade Terran. This is basically how all Terrans were thinking this is how you play. You basically just care about rushing into 3-3 three, three upgrades as quickly as possible and going into your super late game. But it does. you do have to get away with quite a small uh, factory count, though. And he needs to be careful when, when he decides to add on factories. A lot of mistakes Terran players will make is, say, before they when they take their fourth base. That probe is crazy, by the way, killing the Vulture and not even dying. <laughs> like... This is a bit of a wild early game situation with the Vulture it's trying to get out on the map. But yeah, um, if he doesn't add on, say, if he, if he goes on to four bases before going up to seven factories or something, he can just die. So like when you make um, factories is very critical because you're doing an old style, but you need to make adjustments to it to fit the modern meta. So I'm hoping he won't make the mistake of, say, only staying on like four or five factories and then trying to like think about taking his third and fourth. Like he needs to go, he needs to go up to like four, uh, four to six factories take his third and then go up to seven factories and then take his fourth well that's going to give a lot of time to snow to just take massive parts portions of the map and the answer for royal is actually to get a dropship out here and try to utilize the dropship to shut down some outlying bases but snow is going to catch this dropship moving through the middle of the map it doesn't die, but ha just having the information, knowing that that's out on the map, is huge for Snow. He's going to have more forces uh, set up in different locations just to make sure that this drop doesn't deal too much damage. Yeah. I think it will be able to get him here into the bottom left, but I mean, there's no probes down here mining or anything yet so i don't, I don't think this is going to be too successful and this cannon's going up here so unfortunately there's like pretty much only this probe maybe dying is the only risk factor here for snow and it even throws down a pylon before dying in defiance there just to help not get supply blocked a little bit here yeah this is looking great for snow the third base is extremely late we're at 10 minutes now um, and we haven't even seen that get started, I don't think. Unless that's the floating, the floating building out in the front is actually the uh, CC. Okay, I think we just might have seen it get started in the main base. Yeah. But the up, the really the upgrades are the only thing that's big. What the heck? Two Templar archives. That's a bit of a mistake. There's the CC moving forward now. He's gonna take it right around 11 minutes with plus one. And Snow is just getting set up in position to try and slow this down as much as possible. This is where the uh, builds, the and the rubber meets the road. This is when you can see the power of. Protoss player in the modern meta and why this type of play was uh, kind of ceased by the Terran players. They're not doing this anymore because you can slow down this attack so much and having the upgrades here doesn't really help you in getting this pace too much. Uh, especially the two upgrades that are rolling right now, they're not they're not doing anything to help you get this third base. They're uh, taking up a lot of money and the plus two plus one is not going to come in for quite some time. 
Oh, what is this? Storm? No Reavers getting laid down here. I don't think he can hit over top of these mineral patches to actually hit the SCVs. The SCVs have all been pulled. They're actually being pulled over to the third base, so he could come back with the Reaver and... Oh, he's going to drop both Zealots so that he has... Uh, room for the second reaver. He picks up the second reaver once again, bringing them over here to all of these SCVs. So many SCVs could go down right now. One tank is just barely in range of that one reaver and prevents it from taking one more shot. Reaver here with 13 kills, just delaying this so heavily. And meanwhile, tons of bases going up for Snow. He's taking center left. He's taking all of bottom left as well. He's got those saturated. His economy and supply is booming, and Royal is floundering right now, trying to take the space at 12 minutes. He still can't really mine here. Wow. 14 kills on that Reaver when all things are said and done, saying pretty wild stuff. And expanding like an absolute monster behind this snow is just looking pretty unstoppable today. A little bit scary. Trying to come in here for another attack as well. There's a lot of Zealot Goon. Pretty big spread on these tanks to, to exploit. And not a lot of vultures to soak up these Zealots as well. Beautiful B-Matrix is coming out to save this tank on the bottom right. But it's just too much critical mass of units here. I think he can get into this pocket and threaten the SCVs in the command center here. This is going to be a little bit wild, Sam. The 2-1 upgrade finished up, and despite that, he's still able to break through here. You can just see why this play has been uh, not as popular for Terran any longer. Um, even though he's got those great upgrades, he's just not able to defend this base appropriately. He's lost so many SCVs. He's lost so many tanks. And Snow is no. accelerating at further and further ahead. And he's got so many units popping out here. He doesn't have another gateway set up in the bottom left just yet. But Royal, he can't even get out on the map. He can't send out vultures to go and raid or slow anything down. He's just trying to get uh, mines out here to try and keep himself alive uh, is his main priority. And we're going to have storms pretty soon. And storms are going to be coming in any minute. We have another Reaver here. Oh, he's pulling the SCVs to try and fight the Reaver, which is crazy. That Reaver gets five kills immediately, but the the, the Reaver does go down. Tanks are going to be able to set up once again, holding this position for now. But Snow, I mean, he's done so much damage. He's got so much of the map. Uh, the lead right now is massive. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty monstrous lead. He's ahead in supply by like not an actual pretty large margin. It looks very like, hang on a minute, is, is the Protoss player even winning when you look at the supplies? But it doesn't tell the story. Like he's just throwing units at the wall because he knows that it's going to stick enough that he's going to like just run away with the game. He's got so many bases that are mining right now. And that as long as he just trades a little bit, he's going to keep the Terran player pushed back, unable to attack while he can also keep expanding, keep growing and keep putting more and more pressure onto Royal as time progresses. There will be a little bit of a window now for Royal to try and come out onto that. But these are some beautiful sonic storms over this wall from Snow. He's kind of like trying to get everything done with such a small amount of units right now. Beautiful trades just picking up the high temper so the, the tanks can't even shoot it after they get vision over the wall as well. Now we see this Vulture raiding party coming to the bottom left doing some work and stopping this expansion going up. They are probably maybe going to be able to delay this um, expansion up. There is enough DPS here to kill the Nexus because uh, with upgrades, the Vultures actually do pretty reasonable damage against buildings. Yeah, he might actually get this, but is it going to matter? Another storm coming over. Great use of that spell by Snow, as usual. Zealots are going to come through and clear up most of this. Nexus is getting quite low, but Dragoons are now here. They're going to help out. That Nexus will survive, and dude, Snow already has like 2,000 mineral bank. What is this in the top left-hand corner, by the way? Are we going to get a click up there? I see a big box of red, but I have no idea what that is. What? What I think is he this? Just, <laughs> it, I think it was to make um, High Templars remotely so he could keep Storm dropping at like 12 o'clock and what have you. And so he could also use that later on to secure another rally point in the top left. Well, that is wild. I've never seen that before, but uh, Snow just coming out with some creative moves here. Pulling Royal apart. Nice oh. mine. Actually picking off three of those Zealots. They must have been low already. Uh, and the tank number is growing. But the majority of the map is already held by Snow. Despite him getting up here and slowing things down in the top left, eventually Snow is probably going to be able to take that. Uh, we're just moving forward to take the fourth base now as Royal to grab that mineral only. And we're already 
you know, 16 minutes in, Snow has a complete max, and he's got a ton of storms that can uh, directly counter the upgrades that have been uh, spent, you know, spent so much time upgrading for, for Royal here. Yeah, I mean, it's a super late four base for Royal. He's scanning the main base, trying to see if there's any like potential carrier switches or anything. But even just a straight up game from Snow is going to be worrying enough. He's trying to come in now with a few small skirmish of units, but knows that it's probably better to just back away and not fight into this like monster of a Terran army that Royal has slowly but surely been able to grind up. He has got plus three weapons, one armor on those ground forces for the time being. But yeah, the fact that this four base is so late is going to be so difficult for him. Like this base in the top left going up, once there's three rally point set up is very difficult for Terran players to combat that and Snow is just doing a great job of coming in here and trading with just a few handful of units to soften up the Terran position and uh, whittling down the force so it can't ma ever max out will be very cost efficient for snow he can stay maxed out and keep whittling down royal so his royals like staying more around like 150 160 kind of supply then I think snow is going to be very comfortable in this game going forward well, one thing that can be said for Snow, he does, or for Royal, is that Snow doesn't have bottom left-hand corner rally point set up. He's only rallying out of this one position. So if the army of massive uh, upgrade tank mech can get down to that bottom right-hand corner and contain the one rally point that we've got, maybe there's a chance for Royal. But look at how small his army is. He's got hardly anything. You know, 149 supply, and now these gateways are coming up here in the bottom left. The storms have been uh, whittling down this army, like you were saying, over and over and over again, taking great trades despite the uh, upgrade advantage. Another two couple storms going to come down, killing off a few more tanks, and Royal just, he just doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough income. Yeah. He doesn't have enough tanks. He doesn't have enough of anything to make this work. Well, that's why it's wise for Snow to keep trading like this, because even if it's at a slight deficit sometimes, just keeping the tank count low is going to be critical, because if Royal can just never move out, with a very strong army it's going to be very tough for him to win this game and right now he doesn't have enough supply to feel confident about moving out and uh, that's exactly the position that snow wants to keep him in now that he's taken the top left this is kind of going to be snow's checkmate move once he starts to get these rally points set up he's added gateways in the bottom left for example as well now that he's got two and almost a third rally point set up it's almost impossible for the terran to fight against that you, you there's no win condition you contain one rally point and then you've got to split off all your tanks to go around the map killing bases but you can't do that because you haven't got the other two rally points under control it's just, there's no way you can have enough forces to muster unless you trade at such a crazy cost efficiency that it doesn't even matter anyway but that's not going to happen i don't think royal's going to get those godlike trades that he needs to be able to just like you know contain and slowly kill uh, snow here well i think that royal is going to try to slowly push over to the center right and take that base and just grind it out in a super late game but i don't think that snow's going to allow that to happen he's so close with his rallies to this area that he's just going to keep pumping out units hitting these storms diving on top of everything with zealots you know the the shuttles are coming through oh god the two science vessels are going to die for free here that is so brutal losing those two yeah. science vessels right now he needs those for the emp to try and take some sort of decent trade against all of these templar look at how many templar are coming out my goodness it's pretty wild. I mean, and yeah, the, even just the D-matrixes on the vessels alone are great. The fact that they detect and stop the um, snow being able to mix in DTs, there's so many batch value for that unit. Uh, there's a little bit of an efficient uh, trades coming in here because of how much these Dragoons are all boxed up. They are going splat, but he's still getting great storms on the tanks and whittling down the tank count. Snow needs to be a little bit careful, though, because he will start to get gobbled up if he overextends like that, and I feel like there's a little bit wasteful with the Dragoons. He needs to keep enough left in reserve that Royal can't just get a quick snappy counter-attack going and push down on this vertical vector on the right-hand side of the map, both killing this base and also starting to contain the big rally point in the bottom right. Royal's really trying to make that happen right now. He's trying to kill this... Uh, oh god, this storm is so good. Damn, he kills a bunch of SCVs that are repairing those tanks as well. He's really trying to kill this Nexus because every mineral that's picked up by these probes over here in the center right is a mineral that's out of his pocket. Pocket. He's actually robbing him right now of those uh, precious yeah. resources that he needs to potentially win this game. Should he be able to hold the center right? He will try to push down, I think, uh, the other direction over towards the top left and slowly take over half the map. That's his only win 
uh, hope of winning this game. Like you said, he just doesn't have a rally enough to contain all of the rally points of Snow. There's so many rallies around the map. Another big storm here in the middle of all the tanks, dealing so much damage once again. Yeah, pretty beautiful splitting to actually get those tanks out of position and not just die there for free. So I'm impressed a little bit by Royal's methodology here. He, he's doing a, he's, he's doing a good enough effort considering the game state. I just think it's such a hard mountain for him to climb here. I'm a little bit worried. Like, yeah, he's killed this base and he's able to push up a little bit on the right hand side. But I mean, Snow's just exploded out onto the map and there's pretty much every single base going besides like two of these mineral onlys. And there's no, um, no real hope for Royal in just like crushing him in one big push. It's going to be a very like slow, tentative uh, pushing down on the right hand side, and a few mistakes will be exploited by Snow. So I'm not sure if Royal um, is going to be able to trade well enough here, but Snow is just going to try and push the issue and just run in here anyway. And all these units are still clumped up from attacking this Nexus, so now they're going to get stormed into oblivion. All the units on the right hand side and left hand side just completely getting evaporated now, and there's still some units left in reserve to keep pushing forward even if these dragoons do all go splat he's killed so many of these terran siege tanks over and over again that the tank count has been like pretty much small despite how late the game is the royal needs to take this base right now he has to get this online uh, snow doesn't see seem to be transitioning at all it's not like he's building into carriers after this so i mean the army is still going to be strong for royal for a very long time but um, <laughs> there's just so many options for snow right now. Right, right. But as long as Royal doesn't dip below 140 supply and he's got two mining bases at all times, there's still hope for him in this game. It's just going to be very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he will get this base online here at the center right just as his main and natural are mining out. And the, the third base is going to be starting to get low as well. So he has two bases for now. Uh, he has a lot of uh, gases. So he's got uh, quite a few that are depleted at this point, but they're still helping out to keep him in uh, production in terms of his uh, tanks and goliaths and all that and vessels and everything. He's got a pretty decent army, 150 supply. It's still not quite enough to push against the maxed out Protoss, especially if he gets good trades with the storms, but nice scan there actually with the d matrix going to keep this alive going to kill quite a few of these units as well with the tanks over the wall snow taking a pretty rough trade there but still royal is having a very tough time pushing making any progress whatsoever he's going to start to push towards this uh, mineral only i think this will be the pressure point this will be the final kind of battle here between snow snow and royal if royal can get this and contain top left maybe break into that base take that over he's gonna win if snow breaks him here and prevents him from taking more bases i, I think this is just gonna end i think he has to do that it, it allows him more opportunities to expand it cuts the map horizontally which is good for him gives it yeah and it also shuts out two mining bases and a rally point he needs to do something like that right here right now but snow is just being relentless and trying to chuck storms at the wall and seeing what sticks i think royals finally has a good enough setup where all these siege tanks are very deep and far back there's only a few tanks that are out on the periphery that are at risk of getting stormed and now he should be able to keep a high enough uh, tank count in reserve to keep pushing forward here and being a lot more methodical and tentative with his approach which is much needed i would say but uh i'm still a little bit worried for him he's not out of the woods yet he's got the two armor up online now for these uh, terran forces so slightly better upgrades as well but all things considered snow is doing a pretty good job of keeping him back and i would say that one thing we can we have to consider is that snow might not have a large army in the sense of he might have a lot of probes right now so there might not be a huge standing army for snow so if royal can get a big massive push going and start to force some frontal engagements maybe that'll go a lot more royal's way because there isn't a massive army for snow to field right now a lot of its supplies caught up in um, these probes beautiful emps as well yeah EMPs are doing so so much work. D Matrix as well is going to help out a lot. This is a bit wasteful for Snow trying to break this base right now. We need to wait for Royal to start to pull army away from that location in order to assault top left before we try to break that base. But he's getting a little impatient trying to 
get in on that center right and now he's wasted a lot of his army royals hit 198 supply he's gonna try and split the map this is a big moment for royal yeah this, this is this is his moment to shine like everything has been waiting for this moment he finally has the army that he wants and snow like we were just saying maybe has a little bit too many probes so it doesn't have a crazy huge standing army to stop this from just walking across the map and putting pressure on it big mine hits as well going off in the center whittling down what little forces that snow can muster and given time he has got a lot of gateways. He's able to pump out a lot of units at once, but hasn't got like a massive supply of army to just throw against this and stop it in its tracks. Royal is going to take out center left, it looks like. He's trying to bust into the top left as well, but he's got to be very tactful, very slow about taking this down because breaking into a main base is always a difficult position to try and crack. Uh, with storms available, it's that much harder, and Snow's going to make it miserable for a roll to try and take out that base in the top left-hand corner. Great storm there. Actually going to take out both the tanks. Keeps the Nexus alive for now as well, so great win there for Snow. Yeah, he's stopping this position being completely overwhelmed right now, which is all he needs to do. He just needs to make sure he doesn't lose any bases too cost inefficiently right now and kind of stabilize. He is getting this base contained in the top left, and the pressure is still on this base at 9 o'clock, so Snow is in the, the first like signs of trouble that he's been in pretty much all game long and with these dematrixes being yeah, utilized like this it's going to be very annoying for snow to keep uh, keep what he's doing up for much longer now there's like hardly any high templates remaining in reserve i think he's gonna have to sacrifice the space at nine o'clock now at long last well now might be a good time to attack in the center right i'm not sure how many tanks are still left over there but a lot of army has been mobilized to take out this top left uh, he has still a maxed out supply but a lot of that is in the rallies they're just coming out right now some te templar popping out here trying to get rid of a few of these vultures there's a lot of zealots behind this that could be brought to bear here by snow just up in the top left hand corner uh, waiting by the gateways he hasn't pulled those out just yet i think he's waiting to uh jump on top of royal's army as he pulls up with the tanks try to you know stop this in its tracks but they're actually just getting eaten alive all those zealots wow. went down for free and and there's snow not taking the greatest trades he hasn't started the transition still he's got a sargate but we don't have any carriers hitting the field just yet yeah, and Royal's been doing a great job of constantly laying mines in the center of the board and made it very difficult for Snow to finally come up here. But now we see High Templars desperately trying to get some storms off into those mineral lines, only killing about three or so SCVs. There's another High Templar, though, trying to do some follow-up damage. Does kill the tank and a few more SCVs, so a little bit of damage here. But now the, 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 the whole top left is completely exposed. High Templars getting picked up as they're popping out of the gateways, and Royal's starting to go to work in crushing that expansion. Finally, the map will be eventually split in half, and that will be a win winning game state for Royal if he can manage that and he's done an absolutely phenomenal job of dealing with Snow that was in complete macro house power mode and now he's kind of completely flipping the script on Snow and is looking very strong right now. This is crazy. I really thought that Snow had this game. Maybe yeah. the lack of transition from him um, being the big issue here, right? He never wanted to switch into carriers. He just wanted to play this a complete gateway man style it usually works out so well for him but it's just not been able to break anything now he's gonna try and get over here to the center right can he actually get in oh the emp hits everything once again there's still enough tanks here i think to hold on the tank line is so deep and there's no storm to try and pick off these big groups of tanks he's gonna be denied he can't break the center right and royal is gonna take lay claim over all of this center or top left I actually think Snow is a little bit of a victim of success in this game in the sense like things were going so well for him with the cost efficient trades that he was happy to get a crazy probe count loads of expansions and like rely on that style to the point where he couldn't go carriers if he had like used up even more supply and trying to switch to carriers he'd have even less army to fight with and I think like that's kind of been the, been the issue here but Snow is still like pressing forward killing a lot of these tanks on the right hand side and now threatening this base at 3 o'clock a decent amount of SCVs will die even storms being laid down on top of Dragoon just to make sure he kills 
shuts that whole SUV train, not even that last SUV getting out with its life, completely shuts down the majority of Royal's economy right now. He's only got a dried up mineral expansion and the other mineral base has just gone online, finally landing this other CC down in the, the natural pocket of the top left as well. But having his base shut down on the right prevents Royal having that explosive economy that he wanted to. The, the game is still very um, uh, favored towards Royal in the sense that now he's got the map split in half still. It's still looking pretty good for him, but having that extra economy stripped away from him is a little bit painful in this moment because he's actually not maxed out right now. Well, Snow could actually go for the main base. He could try yeah. to break in there and make a counter attack, uh, try to change this game. If he gets in with the counter attack and hits the main and forces Royal to pull back uh, forces from the top left, or opens up a position that's, uh, you know, not as well defended any longer. Maybe Snow can get in there to the top left and break that base open once again. Looks like Royal has just enough here to hold everything back. And he's going to get the CC over to the top left. I think he's got this game now. This is getting really, really dire yeah. for Snow. Despite having 6k bank, there's really not a whole lot he can do. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's going to be very difficult for Snow at the very least. I mean, he is getting 3 o'clock set up and he will eventually try to retake um, 9. I think he just made a gateway at 9 so he can start making high tempers there or something. But I think Royal's going to come in here and squeeze that out. But look at this big, massive force of Snow desperately trying to come in here and cr um, crush this, this position. But there is some tanks on the other side of that high ground that are shooting over the ledge and making this a little bit more annoying and it's bugging out the AI a little bit as well. Snow tries to split his forces to both go north to get those tanks on the other side of the wall while also still storming these tanks in the main line to death, trying to whittle down as much of the forces as Royal as possible. He's just barely cracking open these positions, but not enough to have an, uh, to have a... Oh, the beautiful SCV dance as well. Not going to be losing those critical SCVs as well. Beautiful defense from Royal, but the supplies are still kind of relatively the same, though. Like, it, it, neither player is really gaining much of an advantage, but this does favor Royal because he's happy to maintain the game state. 120 supply for Royal. Oil. He is in a very low supply, very small amount of army. Of course, he did lose a lot of SCVs recently, so that might be a little bit deceptive. Um, Snow going to remax super fast on all of these gateways that he's got with that 3k bank still left over after the remax. It's kind of insane. He's going to go after the SCVs here. Gets quite a few of those, but... Uh, still going to be plenty of mining up there for Royal. Can Snow break through right now? I think this is really his last chance. If he doesn't yeah. get in here right now, uh, uh, Royal's going to have too much income. He's going to have too much uh, army to, to hold back uh, further attacks. He's coming in. Best he can do is land a bunch of storms. Break this base. He does get some good storms there on the right-hand side, hitting those big groups of tanks. He's getting some storms on these... Uh, SCVs as well. He takes over the mineral only, but his army is evaporating down to just 110 supply for Royal. That is crazy. And a quick remax from Snow once again, but he's running out of money. Yeah, this is a really weird situation because Royal is technically dying, but Snow's running out of juice to get the job done with. So it's kind of a bit of a weird scenario. Um, Royal is technically at risk of dying at any moment, though. Like, yeah, like I said earlier, dipping below that like 140 threshold does put you at risk of just being bowled over by the Protoss maxed out army. If Snow can keep the pressure on, keep some High Templars coming into these expansions to like shut down mining, it's going to be great for him. He might get a lot of SCVs in his top left as well. Still has Reavers being build at this point in the game only snow does it like this picks off almost every scv in this base so many kills here on this reaver even more damage going down right now this could actually be the straw that breaks the camel's back we've had yeah. so many attacks kind of like this throughout this game that haven't done too much damage um in slowing royal down but this one might be the the big one this this could be it guys He's going to I mean, load up a ton more units and try to break this with Royal not having good income. He's not going to be able to reproduce that army as quickly. He ravaged like 30-40% of Royal's economy and killed a few units with, with that Reaver as well. So like everything is going in his favor and he's got such a strong maxed out army and Royal's just barely got 130 supplies. So there's enough here to bowl him over, but it's going to come down to execution. Some beautiful storms trying to come out onto the SCV line and units not so far finding the damage that they want to, but it doesn't matter. There's still a 
critical mass here to overwhelm this Terran position. And you should be able to clean this up, or at the very least, rotate over to the left-hand side and put pressure onto this exposed expansion in the top left here, because now the units are kind of cut off from coming up here and reinforcing. Oh my god, he's sending out probes right now to try and kill some of this stuff. He's killing off the last couple of tanks. Four dragoons remain. It's really coming down to this. We're below 100 wow. supply for Royal. And three dragoons managed to make their way past the defenses wow. over here into these uh, this mineral line. Start to deal that damage. One tank comes up to start to bully those back, but it will lose its life, I think. Picking off that tank is pretty big right now with the small number of tanks that remain. He's going to have to set up a perfect defense in order to hold back Snow's next attack. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Like the, the relative game state is just shrinking. It's like both players think that they're winning, so they're happy to trade off all their pieces off the board to simplify the game state, but both players are kind of remaining relatively where they were at originally on the power scale. It's just that there's a lot less units and economy available to both. But right now, uh, Snow, one of 160 supply to 100, probably the, the biggest advantage he's had in this game. He's, he's managed to find himself into a nice little game state here, but he is drying up rapidly. He has to get something done right here, right now, before Royal can start to stabilize again. And he might have just barely been able to do this. I think there's only a couple of sea tanks, beautiful matrix on that right-hand side tank. Another EMP on the left um, High Templar as well, whittling down what little utility is afforded to Royal. Uh, that's a beautiful storm on those back row tanks, though, and this follow-up storm is going to help these Dragoons come in here and get a nice cleanup on R5. And now we'll see a little rinse and repeat of these Dragoons coming up into the top left and being annoying again and forcing Royal to reposition. But there's a drop in the, the bottom right, the, the right-hand side base, though. So the economy of the, the Pearl's Plate is being shut down right now. And that's pretty much his uh, second only mining base. The only other mining base is, is mineral only right now. Oh my gosh, this is so close. The drop over here, so clutch right now from Royal just to get some units over there to slow down the economy. These dragoons are going to end up going down, it looks like. Not going to get much damage over there in the top left-hand corner. We didn't have any drops come through uh, from Snow to actually shut down the the mineral, the mining over here. And look at how low this mining is, actually. Look at how few yeah. resources are left at this position. He's going to get one more shot with the Reaver. He's right next to this tank, so he can keep firing here. Getting a few more kills. Seven kills total on this Reaver is insane. Another group of army coming up. Can he jump on top of these last few tanks and take over the top left? It's so close. One more storm. One more storm. Does he have another... Can he actually get it off? He does get another storm there. He is so close to breaking this. Everything is being pulled to the front for Royal. Everything that's been on defense this entire game is going to be pulled out. There we go. Another great storm here on the SCVs. Royal is so close to being up. 64 supply, Shun. Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of blown away that this game has been this close. Like, the trades have been absolutely insane from the start all the way to the finish. And Snow has just barely done it. He's just barely done it with less than a control group worth of units left remaining. Going to be crippling the economy. GG. Oh final call from Roy. God. One of the most wildest, intense back and forth games we've had saying, what was that? My goodness, we are being stretched to our absolute limits in this series thus far. Two of the greatest games of the season of KCM to start us off this week. Crazy, crazy 40-minute games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't expect it to go quite this way, but we did see those lineups and we're you know, anticipating a little bit of fireworks and that all three squads were going to be taking it very seriously. And that's exactly what we're getting right now. Absolute crazy games. I'm all about it saying this is really intense. Now we're going to see action. I would love to see a good performance out of him. Let's see if he can dispatch Snow, who's got to be feeling pretty good about his uh, early commanding uh, uh, game states that he's had in these big, long games. Absolutely. I mean, Action is a player I haven't seen for quite some time. Uh, has been out of the limelight for a little while now. And uh, maybe just working on this game, maybe practicing hard, maybe just taking it easy. I'm not sure. We'll see what his uh, current state is looking like here in this game, because Snow is going to push him to his absolute limit. Yeah, I mean, there was once a time where Snow was just kind of known as like being really good at Reavers and really good in PvT, but that moment has passed. Like, Snow is also pretty dominant in PvZ as well these days. He's not quite to like crazy levels yet, but he's getting there. It's almost to the point where he's becoming like the Protoss Flash, just with a, you know, a little bit less consistency in his game. 
he's very consistent in uh, pro league and other online tournaments maybe just struggling with live play you think that's a good right. characterization I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think it's very difficult for him to find his footing in those live events. I don't know if that's just a nerves thing, lack of experience, or that the the change in environment is affecting his ability to play in some way. Like that, these are all very valid factors that you don't really consider while watching at home. But when you're actually at a LAN event playing live with like people there watching you and there's cameras rolling and stuff, like the amount of nerves and tension and stress that's going on there, like any tiny little factor makes and breaks. The the difference in these kind of zero-sum games where if one player is able to deal with that pressure better than another then that's a really big advantage to have over your opponent if you can keep your head in the game a lot more absolutely and those nerves will be worked out with more experience and more practice i think that you know snow's been around for a very long time but this game still has a very long life ahead of it plenty of time to uh, calm that and and get into a better headspace in the future when going into these live games now zealot came out first here from snow he's got his nexus started he built a forge in the main base it looks like or is that another pylon it could be another pylon here um a lot of times i've seen snow build the forge in the main and then put the cybernetic core out a little bit later in the natural uh, and then yeah. if he senses any pressure he actually builds the cannon before the cybernetic core just to make sure that he can uh stay alive um but keeping the forge out of the natural seems to be pretty normal for snow with this opener yeah i think uh it's a style choice as well it depends on how oh, you like to play um and the, yeah, sometimes you will see these greedier plays out of Protoss where they, they want to, one, not lose the forge to a fake Hydra bust or something, but also two, sometimes just get out their tech faster. Sometimes it's just like they want to be greedy and throw down the core in their wall instead of a forge. They can just tech just a little bit faster than usual. And uh, if they can get away with it, they're happy. But sometimes this does open you up to being punished by the Zerg. You can get Ling all in if you, you don't make that forge fast enough and those cannons fast enough. So you need to be careful about how you hedge your bets in the early game stage. And yeah, he's, he's kind of like tried to get away with like only making Zealots um, for the time being. And generally speaking, this is fine as long as you're well versed in the game state and have a probe scout checking what's what. Like he's got this probe up here and he sees that these Lings are out of position. So he knows that these Zealots are much more safer to move out right now and what have you. Action's doing a great job of task switching back and forth between these two bases, making sure he's got these links moving at all times, chasing down this probe and also uh, checking at the front of the base, but he needs to keep these drones alive. Not going to lose these drones. Oh god, he's definitely going to lose that one. One goes down. That's a bit rough. Now the links are going to come up and trade poorly behind the uh, mineral patches here this is exactly what snow is looking for with these first three zealots yeah and uh, there's no way of dealing with this really like it's even kind of bad if you you try and make a creep to make a sunken to kill them like there's no good answer to to what snow is doing here there's no like cost efficient way of dealing with this um he might try and just get us around on it so he doesn't have to worry about the zealots coming in to counter attack the drones while more zealots move out so he's just going to take the slightly cost inefficient trade and honestly that went probably about as good as you you can you can get without the zealots bugging out or something so mm. the whole thing's considered that's a bit of a crisis averted i would say for action and you do want to kill them ideally you want to take the cost um inefficient trade just because like say later on he runs out of more zealots you want to go deal with that then he can just come and hit your drones for free and it's like you, you can't really deal with that kind of pressure um being done to you so it's, it's better just to take the cost inefficient trade generally speaking Ooh, a second stargate comes up from yeah. snow he's thinking that this is going to be a mutilus play and it could possibly be although we don't see a second gas just yet uh, i'm leaning more towards just a few scourge and hydras popping out here for action but snow seems to think that uh, there's some trickery afoot that action's going to try and switch it up into mutas and and we'll see if that comes to pass, whether Snow is correct or not. Uh, it's going to be yeah. a big decider in this game. However, you can still use, even if there aren't mutas popping out, you can still use big groups of Corsairs to wipe out Overlords. And that could lead you to a victory, but a lot of these Zerg players are good enough to keep most of their Overlords alive just with pure Hydra. 
Yeah, a lot of the strength of the Corsair is that you can come in with these Zealot um, Corsair timings where the Hydras are distracted with the Zealots and the, the Corsairs can you know go to work for free on those Overlords. And it's a nice little natural synergy for those units to pair and also does give you the ability to deal with like an Ogre Zerg switch up if he does decide to like invest heavily into Muters or what have you. So yeah, very strong, safe way of playing as Protoss players. That's why we see it so much. It also does allow them to scout around the map for that critical intel because this is a Zerg favored match up if uh, information is denied if information is gathered from protoss it actually can become a little bit more protoss sided if they're able to min max their build to what the zerg's doing exactly yeah, the three corsairs are out now it's not quite revealing the fact that we've got uh, double stargate yet oh is this four okay it's four i think he should know seeing four at this timing he might be able to connect the dots and figure out how many course or how many uh, stargates are available for yeah. us no and when he figures that out he should just build a lot of hydras just extra hydras don't drone too hard because you can't be losing overlords you have to have enough hydras to fight the zealots and kill off the corsairs if they try to come in yeah usually you'll be like chilling under the absolute bare minimal amount of hydras but now that you've seen this you kind of have to respect it and just cut your drone production and go straight up into like two control groups of hydras right away you kind of do that anyway but usually you're squeezing out more drones to get there and you'll and that will have you so yeah this is actually really wise from action just to like just bury himself with her hydras so that he can also move out and this is the critical thing it's not just about having good defense here it's about having a good pressure potential on the pros player because he has nothing available to defend this besides zealot cannon so he is like throw down like six or so cannons right now because storm is going to be too late in uh, dealing with his timing yeah yeah, there's a lot of hydras moving forward and he's bringing every overlord now there is a there could be a possibility of a counterattack with dt or something like that coming in but uh action is relatively certain that there's no templar archives he knows that there's no storm just yet but um there could be a potential for a dt it just depends on you know how the production was going with these um these corsairs how much he was, was he cutting just to get that Templar yeah. archives is out a little bit faster and he's guessed right here there's no Templar out on the map he kills the wall he's not gonna just dive in and kill his opponent so he's just gonna stay out here and contain what do you think is he gonna keep making hydras try to break the wall or is he just going to no. Soft fall contain. back soft contain okay he's a he's a he's an aggressive macro player he will almost always lean towards macro play but while being aggressive and applying pressure he doesn't necessarily commit to all ins a lot but he does love to create these pressure scenarios so he want to the fact that he just forced out cannons is good enough for him because that slowed down this gateway count right now every single one of those cannons could have been one of these, these gateways we see now so it has really slowed down this production um, infrastructure being set up by snow to actually break out of this soft container. He's only just now starting his robo just for 10 minutes. So if he does get Lurk Attack online and just chill out here, it could be very difficult for Snow to break out of this contain at all. Meanwhile, Action will just take a fourth base, but he might not even saturate this fourth base until um, Snow fails to break out. Yeah, Snow's going to try and come out now. There's a good number of Hydras. He's starting Lurkers in the front just to block the Zealots and push them back give himself a better trade in this fight more hydras are coming up and almost all the zealots are gone so like the zealots are all gonna get end up getting picked off unless they run away and they will run over to the left hand side try to create a counter-attack threat but lurkers are about to be done here at the front he's gonna contain uh from go from a soft contain here into a, a full-on hard contain in front of uh, snow space and it's going to be very difficult for him to get out of this yeah i mean he's only just now got his robo finishing up and observatory being made and like, he doesn't even have observers at this particular second so he can't even try to challenge this even if he did have the units to deal with this which he doesn't so yeah really rough spot for snow to be in i'm really impressed by actions very like you know calm collected way of approaching this game this is the kind of zerg that i like to see it's very well thought out it's very strong as well like he's he's putting the he's asking a lot of questions of snow and if snow doesn't even have remotely the right answers like action just going to be ahead snow is getting his first observer out he'll have to go into a big wave of dragoons here shortly to try and break through but the wideness of the the front of the choke on radion is going to give action a huge surface area to lay down a wide berth of 
A little spotted lurker holes there. Now look at how many spots you can throw down. It's so hard to break through. Such a wide no. concave of lurkers in any map, but this map specifically. Yeah, it's rough uh, coming out into these positions. And he's even have to kill his own cannons or whatever just to get out there with his Dragoons. He doesn't even have a lot of Dragoons yet. You need a massive amount of Dragoons to start breaking through these positions. And uh, I don't think he's going to do it. He's going to have to rely on, like, getting something done with these Corsairs and Shuttles, I think. I don't feel like he's going to be successful in breaking out. I feel like he's going to have to do some damage uh, indirectly to action, like Storm Drops, DT Drops, anything. I, I think just trying to break out right now is going to fail. Uh, this is looking bad. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think that if Action is able to just completely focus on rallying everything to the front and controlling his units here, there's no way that Snow can break out. However, if Snow can get some units out on the map and start to kill drones and make things difficult for Action, interrupt the economy a little bit and draw some of the attention away from the front maybe he can right. come out get a couple of good storms get you know some decent trades on the lurker start to break that position but it's going to be tough this dt is playing a crazy game of cat and mouse right now trying to slip into this natural and he has made it in but action is aware of that he saw it nice and this is like the, the this is like high level zerg stuff when you're able to keep track of dts you can't even like actually like technically see and keeping as many drones as possible alive like there's a good chance that if you don't see that dt that you lose your entire drone line you just won't even get the sound cue that your drones are being attacked it'll wipe out everything so having any kind of like no knowledge about that is key but it's still getting a lot of work done this is we've got nine kills now now 10 that's a lot of drones this is this is pretty good he's he's by no means out of the woods that he's currently stuck in right now but this is the kind of thing that we need to happen to start to mount a comeback now there'll be drones being remade a little bit of attention diverted away from this front base now you'll have enough time to have built up enough dragoons that he can start to come out and skirmish with this contain he needs to be very careful about how he goes about it still yeah he's gonna slowly push out here he's still got three zealots on the map over on that center left he's gonna send those into the probably the third uh, or the natural at, at an opportune time right when action is focused primarily on holding this uh, contain. Look at how big of the spread there is here. It's crazy. Great storm there actually removes the threat of those Scourge. Oh, massive storm on triple. Uh, oh my God, the storms here are insane. Four lurkers in that second storm. Three in the first. He only has one shot to pick off all of these lurkers he just needs one dragoon shot on each of these and he will finish them off right. a two shots now because they've regained a little bit of this hp but he is really starting to break through right now yeah storm is 110 damage over 2.5 seconds so just one dragoon shot afterwards is great to finish them off and look at this beautiful floods of storms just eviscerating those packs of hydras finally he's going to be able to start to make some progress and now he has more surface area for these dragoons to have a lot more value in these fights and with some zealot streaming out to tank as well it looks like he will just barely have enough to at least maybe have some hope of breaking out but actually maybe maybe with the hydras on the right hand side actually i think uh, action is still gonna come out on top this is kind of quite this is kind of crazy wow that's wild he does manage to push everything back but he's got no lurkers behind this all the lurkers have been picked off all the important units all the expensive units have been taken care of he hasn't sent in those zealots yet i'm really shocked that snow didn't send those in while action was desperately trying to hold that front because there was a moment there where action had all of his attention and just sending in those zealots to the third would have done a lot of damage i feel he's gonna send them in now but it's maybe a little bit late here he will be able to push out the uh, look at that action actually gives up the uh the the containment so this game will go on this is incredible play from snow he's managed to do everything at the same time here and he will be able to break out yeah, I mean, the, the main thing that we've got going for action is that he did have these four bases saturated and up and running before we have Snow taking his third base. So he's by no means out of this uh, this game still. But uh, so far, Snow's done a great job of navigating his way into a more playable game state. Action trying to shut down the move out on this bridge, but Snow's not having any of it. Just throwing down a couple of storms to blanket those hydrogen and keep pushing out. Even when the high temple is being targeted, he's still getting the, the spells off, getting as much value as possible. Still 
action, pushing him back despite the odds seeming stacked against him to be able to do so. But now Snow has got this bait starting to come online and action doesn't want to allow it. He pushes in, but this might be a little bit of an overextension because another Hydra level moving on. A lot of Hydra is going to be killed on the exit as well. Whittling down this Hydra force is critical right now. There won't be enough in the big clumps of mass of Hydras to keep fighting the Protoss and keeping the pressure on. So now we see Snow finally able to take his third pretty comfortably. Um, action's, got, action's like doing reasonably well in the battle zerg sense but this will start to fizzle out in the coming minutes like if he's not able to kill the third base or kill uh, kill snow then he needs to go into hive tech pretty soon but it looks like he wants to do counter attacks and come in and do some uh, uh, indirect damage instead and getting on top of the rally point and forcing snow to turn around his own yeah he knows that if uh, snow loses that base he's gonna mine out and he's just not going to have any income to actually fight him with. But at the same time, Action really hasn't a lot of income remaining anymore either. He's not really mining much in the main base. He's not mining the gas. He's hardly got any drones at the fourth. His mining has been really uh, slow since he's lost so many of these workers. Now a Zealot over here at the top center dealing a lot of damage. Another Zealot going to run by into the main base. This has killed so many drones. It's kind of insane. Action is going to be able to stabilize, but what does he have left? 97 supply, hardly any drones at some of these bases. He actually needs to spread these out a little bit better. Uh, some of the drone smoothing here is not the greatest. Uh, sending more over to the top center would probably be a good idea, but at the same time, these counterattacks have been amazing from from Snow. He's done such a good job of just yeah. keeping action off kilter uh, throughout this game with this containment play. Now, I guess action can sort of recontain maybe over here on three bases. Snow and keep Snow on just one base, but. Oh man, the battle zerg is just not trading as well as it once did. It's eating a lot of these storms and so many of these uh, hydras are going down basically for free. Another storm goes down on all these hydras. He tries to push forward here to snipe a few of them, but his army is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, it, it, it's a, a bit of a weird situation. I actually don't feel like action should be trying to do this right now. I feel like action should be trying to transition into a hive and just keeping snow on three bases and just worried about sort of like soft containing this sort of bridge location and this choke point on the left hand side instead of pushing the issue like this but he seems very adamant in doing it and actually there's not a lot of templars remaining so we can start targeting down some of these dragoons if only if you run the lurk onto the right run the lurk onto the right if he burrows his lurk onto the right he kills so many probes oh! not quite getting the connections he wanted there if he was target firing a little bit better he maybe would have killed more pros did get like three or so probes uh, but there's nothing to see this dt in the natural expansion dive onto the main base if he doesn't even know he notices at least so he won't lose too many drones but this is still really frustrating for action to have to endure at this stage of the game well this is all of his drones at the 12 o'clock went down to that dt 13 kill dt lost a bunch in the natural as well he just can hardly produce at this moment and storms are going to rip this apart great Great dodge, honestly, right there. Only hitting, I think, two Hydras with that storm. Action pulling back really beautifully there. Keeping the majority of his forces alive. This DT still alive, looking for locations that it can run in once again. At 12 o'clock, he's mining nothing right now. We are uh, just about out of gas here for action. He's still got the pedal to the floor, and he is uh, running on empty. He does break in here, kills the last couple of Templar. Oh, the Templar from behind, though. It looked like he was actually going to clear all of these Dragoons with the Templar coming up to uh, assist, managing to keep keep snow in this a dt the dt still alive in the main base are you kidding me dealing even more damage this is insane 15 kills and a lurker being made here there's only two dragoons versus four hydras what is even happening he's gonna kill the last hydra there's an archon that archon actually clears everything and the dt is still alive 15 kills he gets the observer the observer is dead the lurker can kill everything as long as it pops up but it doesn't the archon kills the egg I feel like we're watching a micro UMS map or something, but it's a normal game of StarCraft saying what is even happening in these crazy intense back and forth. DT still going to work. 16 kills now on this Dark Templar, which is still alive and denying money in the natural expansion. No drones moaning at the 12 o'clock position as well. Action is banking on finishing the game right here, right now. And it's unable to do so. There's no cannons here. If he could just get one lurker borrowed in this mineral line, he could completely shut down the entire mining operation of snow. But he's just barely not 
not been able to do it. Oh, this DT has been alive for so long. A Mutalus pops out. Is that really the play? He's going to try and switch into Mutas with two Archons here. I think that Snow can hold on. Oh, dude, this has been so insane. We've got one observer here and no drones at 12 o'clock. There's been no drones there for so long. There's no drones at the natural either. 15 kill Archon here, by the way. Just insane. I am completely out of breath after all this action. It's wild. <laughs> all, all three of these games have literally just been the players happy to grind themselves down to the absolute nubbiest of armies. And it, it's been wild, Sam. We don't usually see games have this kind of pacing or like tempo swinginess. And now he's going to wait for the army to come in and start sniping probes. The Archons are out of position. The Hydra sniped on the Archons. His army is a little bit in a train right now. So the units are getting shut down one at a time. Yeah, he dodges the he has the observer and he dodges the storms and he has the, the, the two lurkers in one observer the other observer goes down the other observer goes down and he can't break across the ramp without storming the, the lurkers doesn't get a good storm on those hydrolists but he's being shut out from mining in his third base critically by these mutilists who are now trying to dance against the archon they can kill this archon with good micro and he might shut down some of these high templates this is crazy play out of action what are we watching right now action just going to work here with the mutas picking off the very final mining base all all the miners here are gone for snow. He's going to transfer whatever six probes he had on all of the uh, depleted geysers here. Diving in on top of the Templar. These are huge kills. Every single Templar here is just as good as gold. This Archon is very low, but if it gets one hit on the uh, group of Mutas, it's going to be massive. He comes in again to pick off more of these Templar, but he doesn't get either of them before the Archon is made. Maybe this Lurker can do the trick. Another Dark Templar coming into the natural. No way. This Dark Templar is going to do so much damage. And action is so focused here on the front, bringing everything together to try and kill Snow right now. He's not going to notice. He doesn't notice at all. This game is actually off the chain right now, so we're seeing really high-level stuff from both players. And he's going to shut down enough of this um, army on the right and left-hand side that there's nothing to defend on the right-hand side now. He's finally getting enough critical damage done to Snow's economy. That he might have that just been done it. And the Observer, there's one Observer to rule them all, Stan. Like, if, if he can just keep this um, Observer alive, maybe he can... Oh. I don't know. Oh. 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 So many Hydras just died, but there is a decent macro cycle back at home as well like this is kind of crazy there's not there's not a lot mining for both players but there's certainly a lot more mining for action right now this is a crazy game where are the overlords right now we've got no overlords in any of these bases the dt has just been running rampant through everything a a action has some defense back at home but he's just about to get broken here if he doesn't bring everything together right here right now he could just lose this game straight up he loses the lurker the observer no need to snipe that anymore the hydras are spread pretty good spread here another nice storm comes down i think that storm might have just clutched it out the arc Con's gonna push through to the win. Snow is just barely breaking through everywhere. This is an incredible story of a game. The CVP has been absolutely wild, but I think Snow has just barely managed to do it. Six probes! He's got six probes! I, I, I'm honestly like so blown away by it. Like, not only is he. Just one game like this would be crazy, but the, all three of the games have kind of looked like this. This is really bizarre that we're seeing this kind of in intense, like, raw brood war. Like, you don't usually see this kind of, like, brutal action, but this is, like, real peak StarCraft right now, where everything is just one big, massive chaos ladder that both players are trying to scramble to get to the top of. Ah, uh, the drones have been found at the 12 o'clock. Action was trying to hide them over here, and they are going to get picked off. Of course, all the probes are also dead. And there's yeah. not really much that Snow can field. However, his army is better than Action's. Just straight up better. We do not have any lurkers. If we had some lurkers and maybe some Scourge to snipe the Observer, there might be a shot here, but I just don't see it. Yeah, if there was a few more Hydras to start, like, gunning down the Archons and what have you, then it'd be a bit different story. But he's just barely not got enough. GG finally called from action. How is Snow doing it? Like, this is kind of wild saying. He might just go on a crazy double all kill at this rate. Oh, my gosh. It's like a...
Fast and the Furious movie where the cars are flying, you know, yeah. inches over the heads of the main characters and their plot armor is insanely thick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Are we living in a simulation? Like, how? What, what even is this? Oh my goodness, Shun. Thank God for you, man. I would have just completely blown out my voice and, you know, passed out from <laughs> lack of oxygen if I had to cast this all by myself. What an intense, heart pounding game. Snow is going to continue on, though. He is on the route to an all-kill. Could you imagine after three games like that, he continues yeah. on to an all-kill? I mean, I'm here to see it. Like, uh, not, I, I want to see it at this point. My body's ready. Let's go into game number three. Ooh, deep breaths here, guys. We don't want to pass out from just constantly casting just some of the most insane games that you've ever seen in your life. Even casting is intense. Imagine playing, Shun. Yeah, imagine playing, Zen. I, 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 I can't imagine. I mean, I, I had crazy games with intense task switching before, but that was on a different level. Like, I don't even know how these players managed to like keep their brains even remotely combobulated enough to, to deal with that. Um, and what kind of plot armor is this from Snow? He he's literally has Trump levels of plot armor right now, just turning his head and dodging bullets like craziness. Well, Snow, how long can that plot am armor last? I mean, you can't just go all the way to an all kill here, can you? Is it possible? I don't know. Could we Maybe. see Snow go all the way? I mean, this would be the most incredible all kill you've ever seen in your life. This this would require like its own YouTube video, like a, just to yeah. explain how insane this completely that one, this this yeah. this game is this this week of kcm is yeah like that one time that snow went ultra instinct and like dumpstered a bunch of like asl top tier players like it was nothing yeah yeah and he did it like goku like just barely at the last second you know <laughs> after getting his abs the right his face pushed in and he's like barely able to survive he like steps off the the uh you know the arena stage with barely any health left and uh, picks up a sensu bean and then does it again a moment <laughs> later it's just insane it is very wild to behold honestly i don't know if these players have access to some kind of like you know hyperbolic time chambers where they can like you know increase their levels of practice like many magnitudes more than us mere mortals i don't know what's going on but it seems like a fire has been lit beneath the nerds and they are firing on all cylinders right now it is not like snow's easily crushing these guys either like these are nail biters of games like absolute amazing performance for him to still navigate his way to these victories despite against all the odds being stacked against him in very critical junctions of those games yeah, every single game has been so tight. Uh, incredible performances from Sulky Action and Royal uh, in these games and still not able to rock this guy. Uh, maybe Light can make it happen where uh, Snow or where these others have failed, but I'm still rooting for Snow here now. Like this, this guy, <laughs> he is the main character. He is him right now. He is him right now, all aboard the Snow Train. And I'm feeding it too. I'm not a Protoss player. I'm not even that much of a, a Snow fan. I do like the guy, but I, I'm all about it right now. I'm definitely rooting for Snow. And it's kind of scary to think about, but I, I, I want to see how this game, uh, I, I, wanna, I wonder if the, the things are going to chill out a little bit now and things are going to normal or if we're going to see more fireworks. And either way, I'm going to be happy. The light could bring out some nasty strategies. Um, you can expect like drops from him, vulture drops, the potential here, but Snow has just been so on top of everything. Yeah. Handling every different curveball that's been thrown his way. I wouldn't expect anything different here. He's getting himself into a very clean expansion with the range on the way, a vulture expansion from light. So nothing could be more normal than what we're seeing here in this uh, the initial stages of this PVT, but that doesn't mean it's not going to get insane a little bit later on. Yeah, very true, very true. Going to be picking off this cell up before it gets back to the safety of the Dragoon that's just popped out. Nothing too crazy here. 
And uh, looks like we have a fast start put out of light. Now, this might be just for, you know, a wraith, but knowing light, this is a vulture drop, okay? Like, light is known for doing vulture drop, and like, back in the day, like, all the pro gamers, all the Protoss pro gamers in his, is his gaming team, all had their dragoons just chilling in the main base in their PVTs, and all the other dragoons, all the other Protoss players never had their dragoons waiting in the main base. That's because all the pro gamers in light's pro gaming house know that if they don't put their Dracoons in the main base, they just die. So everyone in Light's pro gaming team had really great anti-harassment and drop and what have you. And uh, for some reason, it took a lot of players a long time to even figure out that Light likes to do this. So he was just dominating so much for so long with these little, like, you know, vulture drop styles. Well, it's more memorable, the uh, insane pushes from Light, his maxed out Terran army that looks so indomitable, so unbreakable, but these little moves in the early game, the ones that pick off a few probes here and there and give you the ability to get into that late game or what makes him yeah. so strong. Now, mines are being set up everywhere. He hasn't built a bunker. He's gotten away with a lot here and he's going to go for this drop. You can see Snow already has uh, units in his main and he's setting up pylons to block vultures from you know easily getting around inside of his uh, main base he's got a great little wall going on here he's got units everywhere making sure he can see every part of his base just in case the drop tries to come into the bottom left hand corner he's got a dragon down there ready to go and i don't think this is going to deal too much damage but let's see what light can make happen yeah look at that beautiful wall yeah that's nice gateways triple gateway as well so he's gonna have so many goons out to deal with anything that's coming forward he's even gonna maybe spot this no he's got the one observer out in the front he's gonna send one dragoon to start clearing mines beautiful decision making here from snow oh that's actually a pylon down there he sees it he sees it he's gonna go after it now Nice. This is pretty much optimal uh, from Snow. You can just recycle the probes, the North Mineral Patch, to deny a few of them from dying, and the Dragoons will come in here and swallow up the rest. And you can't come in here to save the Vultures because of the angle and the way the Dragoons are waiting on the right-hand side. There's no there's no opportunity to retreat and get the Vultures out alive. So you're also almost guaranteeing the Vultures dying as well as not taking much damage. So really, really stellar stuff here from Snow. Both understanding um, light style, but also... Um, dealing with it in a very cost efficient way and um now going to be going into its you know trademark reavers as well which might also make light want to think about maybe making a ray for going into five factory here because it's, he's so good with his reavers oh he's gonna try another drop does he focus down the, the the drop ship no drop ship will get out but that was completely shut down this is beautiful yeah. play from snow not even you know uh, making the mistake of pulling back and thinking that the drop play is over. He just stays in the position. He knows that that dropship is still alive, still a threat on the map. He clears it out beautifully. He's still got dragons in the main. He's expecting another drop here. I think that Light is going to give up on this play, though. Well, he sees such few units with the Observer. He's just a little bit worried that, okay, maybe there's a few more vultures just chilling out on the map. And it's a possibility that there could be another uh, third vulture drop. And, and the only way that Light is happy is if, like, you give up on your vulture drop defense. Like, okay, there's no way you're going to try it three times. And you come in the third time and actually kill like eight probes then it's like a little bit more annoying then right so yeah just, just guaranteeing the game state like this is really optimal from snow he knows there's only two factories to worry about there's no push timing that could kill him he's mitigated enough of the early game threat that yeah he's pretty much going to be comfortable and safe no matter what happens and we've got a very uh fast uh, science facility coming down in the bottom left to obfuscate it being scouted by the observer so he doesn't want snow to know that he's teching that's really interesting. Oh, the scan right as carrier start. That is crazy. I mean, he's going to have uh, that science uh, facility here in time to start plus two, which is just perfect for a counterattack. He's going to build a ton of factories right now. He's just going to come out and try to end snow before his carriers come online. That plus two is so important. 
so so important for these Goliaths to start actually killing off the interceptors. Yeah, that, that's the, that's the cut. That's the card that he's selling to Snow. But he's also got more late game insurance with the science facility coming up. He will be able to go up to the better upgrades and what have you, which will maybe make Snow misread the game state a little bit, assuming that you know he's able to trade better in the later in the mid to late game stage when these carriers get online. But then realize, oh, hang on a minute, your your Goliaths actually do have good upgrades, and you've got vessels all of a sudden EMPs. Like yeah, suddenly like this this could like turn the tables a little bit here for light in the future because he might just assume this is nothing but like a six factory timing out of light but really he's got a bit of insurance policy with this tech as well lots more gateways coming in right now i think that snow may just build only gateway units to try and shut down this attack and then switch yep. into carriers a little bit later realizing that he's going to get a lot of pressure on him here early i don't see plus two started when is this plus two going to oh, start? Yeah. It's so important against carriers, guys. The interceptors, when they come out, they'll start to fight. And as soon as they lose their shields, I believe, once the shields are gone, they actually return to the carrier to regain their shields. But if you've got the plus two, you can actually eliminate those interceptors way quicker. And they're not able to get back to the carrier uh, as often to regen those shields. It's actually a really big deal in this matchup in this situation to have that plus two and he does have it on the way now it's gonna allow him to annihilate the interceptors way quicker but it's yeah. not quite there yet it's gonna be a little bit longer before that's online he's gonna start the push now though here we go yeah the main yeah the main issue is just not wasting damage on the interceptors to give them like an infinite health pool if you can actually kill the interceptors rather than just let them constantly regen up then eventually you will whittle down the the and just basically pull the fangs out of the, the snake before it can have a chance to bite you. And now we see a big move out onto the center of the board from Light, and there's not a lot of units here. And he does get the snipe of that Reaver as well. Even, like, not even get to get the connection on that Scarab, actually. Ended up dudding there, so everything is going Light's way. I think, finally, the plot armor of Snow is starting to fall apart here, and maybe Light is going to be that hope at the end of the tunnel here for us to see a little bit more of uh, life and hope for the other races well i've thought the same thing a couple of times already so i'm gonna go ahead and withhold my own judgment here see what snow can pull out how many units he's gonna have when this push finally comes into play uh there are a couple of carriers out two more are gonna be on the way here shortly this probe valiant fight against the vulture does end up getting taken out though walking into mines right now not the greatest but he's gonna sacrifice one zealot to clear all of that out and he will try to get the uh, fourth base yeah. online. There's just started now a third base for light down at the bottom center. Um, drops could shut that down pretty hard. I'm surprised to see Snow trying to take a fourth base while this is coming across the map. I, I feel like he really needs to build up a big army to deal with this, I'm, but I'm, Light is being I'm very slow. I'm not surprised. The, 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 I think Snow understands that there's a... like um, light, light strength is in his timings, and if he, if he cuts just a little bit, he might just straight up die. So I actually really like him taking this fourth base very slowly, especially because he doesn't know about the, um, the science facility right like he's not aware of the tech options of um light so as far as he's concerned light might be doing like an all-in timing two two base timing on him and he just needs to make sure he's got enough stuff so make sure that the stargates are always producing make sure all the gateways are producing and then we're happy and then we don't die then we get our carrier fleet and then we get our fourth and then we win so that's the way he's seeing the game right now but he's not also aware of this science facility so he thinks it's just going to be one one goliaths but very soon we'll have um, plus two finishing up on these goliaths and they'll be able to fight a lot better yeah what i was saying was that i was surprised he was taking the fourth base at all i thought he was just going to completely focus on units right. here and not try to take that but he is getting it up a lot, up and online here you should be able to get probes over that location pretty soon he tried to move into the middle of the map to take a nice wide trade against all of these units but he's actually going to end up falling back with his army and setting up another uh, wide concave once light pushes a little bit farther forward to try and dive on top of this ah man this is this is gonna be crazy plus two is not quite done it's just so close uh, he hasn't bought enough time for that just yet he's actually pushing forward i think a little bit earlier a bit of an anti-timing here for light as he tries to get into this pocket 
Uh, and Snow is going to have a lot more Zealots and Dragoons coming out soon. He doesn't have speed, though. Is that going to be a huge factor? A lot of Vultures here. So many Vultures, considering that this is a carrier play. Six carriers are now out. The Dragoons are backing up, falling away from this. It's going to be uh, up to Snow to just kind of play a very defensive and uh, you know retreating game here. Fighting retreat uh, as everything pushes forward. He's going to drop something down here at the bottom center. A Reaver coming out to shut down this space this is huge yeah slowing down the time on that third is definitely going to be huge here saying and like yeah this is looking pretty good for um snow but 2-1 did uh, finish up just a few moments ago so now a little bit of hope for the trades but uh so far a few of these tanks being siphoned off by this little small fleet of carriers of uh, six right now six is a very strong fighting force though four they can start to fight six they start to become a lot more potent uh, the 2-1 upgrades will allow like some opportunities to keep trading but it's still very hard for like to come in here and actually do what he wants to, uh, to get get accomplished what he needs to he needs to set up actually start getting into this expansion and killing some of the infrastructure and probes and the mining of um, snow here but he's not got enough goliaths left over to fight these carriers and now the reinforcements are cut off from coming in here so eventually snow will just lead off these goliaths and kill the tanks for free and this is looking a little bit disastrous for light who hasn't got this third base to, to kind of uh, fall back into anymore meanwhile snow has a fourth base of his own set up that you can tra probe transfer too soon so this is looking pretty disastrous for light i would say uh, light is going to split off some tanks but three tanks are not going to kill the nexus in time he's definitely going to be able to save that he didn't kill the uh, nexus at the natural he killed a lot of probes but look at the overall supply it's just so much favoring snow at the moment no. snow is actually going to pick up his reaver and leave as well this wraith was sent down there to deal with that and it ends up not getting the kill so many things have gone wrong here for light in just the past couple of minutes is kind of shocking it, the, honestly like the plot armor is real like I, before i was starting to, before, before i was starting to think okay maybe we're starting to normalize a little bit here but no guys we live in a matrix like snow is basically the trump of starcraft and we don't even know what's gonna happen <laughs> He's going to be able to clear out all those mines. It's really a precarious situation with so many probes mining on top of mines. You just have to get that observer out there to deal with that. The oh, Reaver over here in the left is so sick. Just sitting on top of the ramp. Any vulture attack that comes up there, you're going to lose like four vultures immediately. Um, just to one scarab shot. So Snow defending with the absolute minimum here. Utilizing his signature carrier Reaver style. Like nobody else does this. But Snow yeah. does it amazingly well, and I, I don't know if Light can bring this one back, man. I, it's feeling absolutely dire. He's just now taking his third. It's 16 and a half minutes in. Yeah, and it's nine carriers. I mean, at this point, you need, like, like easy MPs to soften up the carriers first, or you need to be able to stop them from mining so you can whittle down the interceptor count, or you need, like, mass cloaked wraiths and you scan kill the observers and then you kill the carriers for free with the wraiths and just hope there's no dragoons around to help. Like, there's so many little things that maybe could win the game for light, but it, everything is just, like, looking so unlikely to be transpiring. He hasn't even got the resources to do a lot of those things, so he's just going to be committing to pure tank goliath i'm hoping for the best and i think that with good control snow will be able to outmaneuver and whittle him down here and i think ideally um light wants to maybe even take the middle base uh, soon as another expansion to keep some minerals churning in and if he can maybe stabilize prevent a fifth base from going up for snow get the middle middle mining then maybe we got something to talk about but for the time being i'm not too sure that's going to be um going to be happening soon yeah 60 supply advantage here for snow he's looking for that killing blow this is a big army for light but that's so many carriers so many interceptors and even without zealot speed he's still gonna be able to just walk up here and fight this army without too much trouble sniping the tanks controlling these carriers dancing them back and forth here over top of this gold, uh, dragon army an easy victory from this position for snow and you know, he had another hard-fought game here. Not as hard-fought as the previous three, but still, this was a challenge. Light gave him yep. a run for his money, but in the end, the plot armor, like you said, too thick. Snow is going to take this one. GG is called. Light taps out, and there it is. On the way to a double all-kill here for Snow.
Our final Zerg player here, Queen, spawning in the bottom right hand corner, Snow in the top left. This is an insane week. I'm loving it here, Shun. This is uh, <laughs> this is so much fun. I love to see Snow, you know, live up to what we expect from him. Just the Protoss Flash is what we'll be calling him if he manages to take down double all kill here. Um, yep. Still not quite at that level when it comes to online or to offline play, but online play, he's definitely deserving of that moniker if he does it here. Yeah. And we were just saying um, off screen about how KCM is kind of special in the sense that it, it seems to provide very high level games on average. And I think that does come down to the fact that there is no offline pressure for these players, but still a lot to play for in terms of like, you know, bragging rights and money and other stuff like that. So I think it all culminates into very high level games. And with the Race War format, having no mirror matchups, I also feel keeps the game feeling a lot more alive and the matches for some reason do seem a lot more raw i absolutely agree with you there shun a lot of insane games and just so much fun not having mirror matchups as well uh, the yeah. the extra layer of uh, sort of competition when it comes to the races competing to show you know who's the best uh, you know which race deserves to dominate it's, it's really a, a fun aspect of this tournament as well yeah this hiding is really really good but snow's not going to give it up he does not expect a nine pool here and he's going to stay and just annoy the heck out of queen who went for that overpool in this game yeah uh, i love to see it i mean I, th what's so special about players of this caliber is the little tiny little mind games and little micro battles that they fight on on all levels both in the, like the first two minutes of the game on like how they you know maneuver their workers around and what have you and how they try and obfuscate their tech choices and the pathing of where they, when they want to get what when but um I, I always find it fascinating how players like snow seem to be extremely consistent at it and, and like we used to see with flash right like it's not just the fact that they're good it's just the fact that more often than not they're coming out on top on all these little tiny mini games and because like starcraft is a game but it's almost like broken down into lots of little mini games that you're playing as well at the same time right kind of have to do it break it down into lots of different little mini games if you want to have any chance yeah. of taking out or or, or taking any games winning any games you have to kind of break things down because it is so complicated so complex it would be impossible to uh, take on everything at once so breaking things down like that i think it's a great mental exercise and i think that's one that a lot of these players uh, utilize in their uh, practice now links are going to get into the main which is very annoying here for snow he was trying to Bear, use the bare minimum of zealots and probes to uh, prevent this from happening. And now he's actually moving out with three zealots, which is looking kind of rough. He might end up losing the pylon. Has he made a, the first really big mistake uh, in this series that we've seen so far? We might just pull him apart here if he uh, plays this out correctly. Yeah, I mean, he's been like playing like cold as ice this game, but I mean, the matriarchy might just uh, melt him and, uh, you know, might have a different kind of uh, plot armor going on for the queen instead. Maybe queen will do a little bit of you know, a reverse action and take out the entire um, Protoss squad. It definitely is possible. But you know what? I don't want to call it because the, in all the other games that we just cast saying, I was thinking the same thing as well. I was thinking, do you know what? This is looking really good for the non-Snow player, you know? And then look what, how we ended up. So I don't want to call it just yet. But he's doing a great job of uh, being annoying and putting on some pressure onto these, but hasn't critically lost like, you know, many of his workers or what have you. So all things considered, unless if he, unless unless he just straight up dies to any follow-up ling pressure i don't think this is like too too much of an issue for snow but using a couple of probes is annoying yeah pretty annoying here that's really slowing him down he didn't build a cannon in the main mineral line and these four lings are likely going to have speed finish up pretty soon which makes them very dangerous uh, he's just trying to keep these alive as long as he can for that speed to finish up layer is on the way Queen is doing everything behind this that he should be teching up, building drones, getting into his next stages of the game uh, while continuing this aggression, this harassment. Pretty difficult thing to do, but for a player, the quality of Queen, it's 
Just another day at the office. He's just keeping these alive. No problem while getting everything going with his build. Snow is struggling. Snow is struggling right now to keep these probes alive while getting his uh, Stargate out and everything. He's, well, he's not. Right he's a great task switcher, but when things are on his terms, in the sense of like when he knows that he's controlling a reaver right now, and he's going to be like, you know, um, you know, he, uh, while he's harassing you with the reaver, he he builds this at this time. But when like something goes wrong in the early game, and like you've got some zerglings in your base that are being controlled, well, things can start to spiral if you you're not really got that drilled out in your head of you do this when because a lot of the times in PVZ you don't have to task switch at this point in the game, so. It's probably one of the weaker things that Protoss players have to, to deal with because they don't get a lot of practice doing this because not a lot of Zerg players can do what Queen's doing right now. Well, you know what? Snow is playing really, really calm right now. He hasn't sent out Zealots to die out on the map or anything. He's not you know, panicked and thrown down an early cannon. He's got a cannon now that it's time to have one. Uh, and that's going to protect his probes in the main. So the damage that can be done by these lings in the main is... Uh, kind of diminished. It's, it's not really a factor anymore. A lot of lings out here in the front. Is he actually going to throw away these lings right after I said, or these zealots, right after I said he wasn't going to do that? That would be crazy, uh, Caster's Curse. It looks like he's going to lose one, but I guess uh, the rest are going to survive. No, that one survives. What? Oh, that's Stop crazy. Stop jinxing it, Stan. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> he lived because of you. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. And uh, plus one should be nearly complete. He's going to start to move out now uh, a little bit. He does have speed on the way. Um, as soon as the Citadel finishes, he's going to hit this timing. I guess he gets in here just in time. The Scourge are there, though. Oof. Keeping that alive? He does keep really? Keeping alive. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, he broke. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's kind of wild. Like, uh, if he had sniped that court. Oh, he does go for the intercept. He does go for the intercept. He can get this. Really, really close here, but looks like Queen didn't react quick enough. I don't think he can catch it. He's going to make it to the cannon. He's going to make it to the cannon. He yeah. saves that? Are you kidding me? That is wild. Poor armor is real right now, saying, like, what is going on in this game? This is crazy. Snow is just... It, it, I don't know how to explain it. Like, how how is he seeming so consistent, so strong? Everything's just aligning for him, like right now. Like, the universe wants Snow to be all killing both squads here. That's for sure. Wow, not even the dive of Scourge over the cannons can kill any Corsairs. He reacts perfectly and handles it. And there's Mutilus out right now. He's going into Mutilus, and Snow didn't lose even a single Corsair. He's still producing Corsairs. He's gonna have plus one soon. Uh, speed is gonna finish in a moment. Moment. He's gonna have a good timing to come in here. I like the Sim City from uh, Queen, but can he hold this attack? Can he hold this pressure from Snow? From Snow? Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit tough for him. He's just finished that speed, so he can run on home, uh, get the Zealots out of there, so that he won't lose any. Oh, he's gonna get the drone. Get it. Nice job getting one oh, drone here. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's also disrupting the mining of some of the other drones that um, just finished and what have you. So the, the mining is also not optimal, even though he killed one drone. It, it, it just put a thorn in the Zerg side a little bit and causes a few frustrations and hiccups for them to clean up before they can go back to doing what they want to do and didn't really commit much for it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I thought that Queen was going to get a little bit more done with those lings in the main base. I thought maybe one or two more pros were going to die or what have you. But yeah, all things considered, like not much was done to Snow, despite him being a little bit flimsy in how he initially dealt with it. He did stabilize very strong afterwards. So uh, we're going to be seeing a very strong six hatch Hydra kind of play out of Queen. He's going to come down to execution and macro from both sides. I don't want to call the game. Um, no. any, by any means it's just it, uh, uh, even if like snow was losing right now i wouldn't want to say that he was losing you know what i mean like it's getting a little <laughs> bit crazy but um chasing these zealots with the muters does give him um a lot of free damage on those and he wants to bait these corsairs in a trade right now if he can get just like a few of these corsair snipes then like snow needs to remake those to be safe again so just killing like one or two of these corsairs would be huge but so far snow hasn't been baited into that trade you just watch the micro from snow he's like the only one who can do this micro with the corsairs where they kind of like flick back flick and shot, yeah yeah they do that like crazy flick shot that almost nobody can do really it's snow versus the world right now he's playing the fourth race he's like not even playing the same game as these other Protoss players yeah he's the zelnaga 
uh, accomplishing what the puny protoss the puny protoss in other weeks of the kcm just couldn't manage to do taking home uh, a win actually i'm not I, I mean i'm calling it a little bit early i imagine that protoss is going to take some sort of points this week because they've been flatlining uh, for the past like three four weeks um all on the back of snow here the zell naga is coming through strong i mean i'm feeling it yeah like it, uh, the plot armor is certainly zell naga level you know what i mean like, that's that's for yeah. damn sure so he's at least got like zell naga technology working for him well, i don't know whether or not he is zell naga or whether or not like he's just one of the chosen that are being uplifted by the zell naga you know to be the, the perfect of form or whatever or essence or whatever it is how are they exact rule but yeah like honestly it's been kind of wild today just how well things have been going for snow um and, and queen does seem to be playing pretty good and he's getting his full face online i don't think anything's gonna happen in this game for a few minutes and i think both players are going to be chilling well that's uh a change of a change pace, of pace. <laughs> we haven't seen <laughs> a calm game for quite some time or even a moment of calm for uh, quite a few different games here it's just been absolute crazy action the entire time can snow win a game like this over queen like queen just able to play you know completely calm here might be able to overwhelm snow unless he can create some chaos because he seems to thrive in those yeah. environments i think so um but yeah i think this is the the, the game that snow is most likely to lose so mm. far like uh, with, with with queen having control over these bridges and being very healthy on supply right now yeah snow needs to come out onto the map right here right now before the contains get set up if he can break out now he's still looking good so this is actually a great play from snow beautiful storms all these color hydras as well and the lurkers are not finished up so there's actually a really great critical timing the lurkers do just hatch out as the storms go down on those eggs so a little bit waste of storm but now the the lurkers are kind of clumped up so they can be stormed by the follow-up high templars as well so pretty good trades here from snow and starting to secure this middle ground was very necessary before that contain got set up and those lurkers finished so great play from snow um he does keep himself like alive and healthy in this game for the time being by doing this so really great critical timing from him oh the observer coming out at this time he's just so clutch just barely as he's breaking through he kills all of the lurkers and pushes things back but he's got no storms he's got almost no zealots here he makes the archon and backs away this was an incredibly close uh, yeah. hold or breakthrough from uh, snow it was like almost a containment there on the bridges for queen but snow is now unleashed on the map he's not got a very strong army he could be pushed back but even if he gets pushed back across the bridge there's still the opportunity for snow to come back across before lurkers are ready in a containment position once again yeah, I mean, but he's basically reset the power scale a little bit there, just so there wasn't a critical mass of Zerg that could set up a contain. Like, mm. Snow's not winning the game right now. It's just that he's whittled down the army to a point where he won't just be contained and, like, slowly uh, whittled out of the game. But now he's hasn't got that many forces to muster to secure his fourth. So now he has a new problem. So, he, you know, he, he, he solved one's problem, but now he, he's created a few more problems to solve because taking this fourth base will be just that little bit more trickier. Zealots just roaming around the map looking for options on where they can strike here to get a few drone kills but Queen seems to be locked down pretty strongly over on the center right but as he sets up more lurkers in the middle things are going to get harder and harder for snow he'd love to hold that middle ground uh, in the center of the map if he manages to hold that as a protoss player it's usually the end of the game for the zerg so the no. fact that queen is holding this doesn't mean that the game is over it just means that you know zerg can continue on in this uh, position we can still see snow take this high ground base as his fourth uh, whereas if uh, snow was holding the middle and queen was trying to take the fourth on high ground it would be just about over because storms can always come up from the, the low ground and annihilate those drones now snow pushing here from his fourth base right after starting to secure that he's going to try and take a good trade here falling back as soon as he's cast his storms wow really impressive stuff here from queen even like tar switching in the top right to quickly dispatch of that um dark templar while sending most of the hydras to the front to reinforce got high fully on the way now three evos just gonna be ramping up into normal late games like finally that defile amount throw down to get that critical plague ability eventually which will help spell disaster for snow with those cost efficient trades allowing the cracklings to really start to get their value 
and they're looking pretty like strong for Queen. I, I, I don't want to call it though. I feel like if I say it, it, it Snow might win. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Snow has been pulling out some miracle wins over and over and over again this series. It is going to take a little bit of grinding work to actually take out Queen here. Great storm on a lot of these Hydras. He's got a big critical mass of Dragoons and we just saw the Defiler Mount start, so it's a long way uh, from the Dark Swarm coming out here. Defilers are not gonna be added on for quite some time. We've got just a couple of Templar in this group. It, does he have enough to push through? He needs a few extra storms. Get two more on high ground over here. And yeah, this is a lot of Dragoons to fight with. Maybe he can break through just before the Defiler Man uh, comes online, before the Dark Storms can come and shut down all of these Dragoons. Yeah, at the moment, this is still just more or less just battle Zerg on crack. So uh, at the moment, we don't see that critical efficiency with these Zerglings. We're still getting some work done coming in open this position and trying to get a wedge in between the two armies right now. So even get some damage done at the third base while kind of siphoning off units at the rally point and maybe weakening the overall army strength of the Protoss player who still needs to keep a lot of forces in position to defend this fourth base potentially. So we can't bring all his forces to bear to defend against us right now. And so the Queen knows that he's trying to exploit that right here right now he does got a few lurkers set up to kind of block off the reinforcements from the rally point so it's forcing snow to make some really cost um cost inefficient decisions here and he's getting a few of the pro transfers back to the uh, third base as well so overall this is going pretty queen sided despite the fact that snow is clearing this up so yeah, really impressive stuff from Queen. He's got a lot of army out in the middle of the map ready to go again as well. He can choose to keep coming across these bridges to be annoying, or he can eventually launch assaults onto this fourth base location. He might do both at the same time. Queen is yeah. consuming a bunch of links right now. He's ready to initiate the assault here on the fourth base and then has an option of pushing over towards that third as well. There's no cannons set up over there just yet. And even if there was, it wouldn't be helping out much against this Crackling plus Defiler army. Ling's getting up here. Some storms get thrown down. It will be a solid defense from Snow this time. But the trades are going to get better and better now for Queen. He's secured his base in the top right, staying one base ahead of the Protoss critically and pushing forward here to try and annihilate this fourth. Yeah, and Peros players are very particular about their hygiene. They don't like Cheeto dust getting stuck all over their faces and fingers like they're saying. But the Zerg are just fine over They love being filthy, and they're getting a lot of work done right now. Really putting the pressure on to Snow. Very difficult for him to make these trades work. And look at this. Further on attacks in that third base location like we were expecting. Going to be cleaning up those rally units and pressuring this third base simultaneously. Keeping the forces of Slow split. And now driving a wedge between the two forces to prevent them from getting any uh, help. Uh, help from the rally point and now lots of probes going down to this lurker saying subterranean spines of that lurker ravaging seven of those probes and Ling's going to work in the four face as well ripping apart the heart of snow's economy at this present time a big train of lurkers just barely saved the nickel time by the sonic shockwave off that archon preventing the further shot from finishing off that line but it doesn't matter enough critical damage has been done to snow right now Oh, this probe transfer is not going to get caught. That was so many probes making their way over here to the third base. The last real hoorah of the economy of snow right here. He's barely hanging on right now with a 10 supply deficit. Ling's just flooding these areas. And even though, you know, we've got Archons, we've got Templar Storms and a bunch of gateway units, it's just not going to be enough. Snow finally cracks under the pressure. The plot armor is broken and he falls apart can the rest of the Protoss squad carry it through to the end I think Snow is going to be incredibly disappointed if that's not going to be the case here all right the main character has been dispatched Snow is out of this week of KCM but I mean he doesn't get the all kill dude he so deserves that 2.2 million one all kill prize at this point <laughs> the amount of work put in by this guy is insane like just look at the position he's given to the Protoss Queen and Sharp are coming out right now one of them's going to be gone so these two Protoss players that are left over only have to take out one opponent right. that is it yeah it's an astute observation saying this is the one of the issues that um these other two squads have got is that there's not only one life one hope for their, them to even have a chance at dispatching the pros team so 
yeah, Protoss still going to be feeling pretty happy despite losing their main protagonist. And uh, what fine plot armor he did have as well. Like, he, he was meant to die at a very specific time. You know, if he had plot armor leading up until, like, you know, the, the climax of the season, and he, he dies at the end, and it's, he's the martyr of the season, and, like, people feel even more connected to him now because he died at the end kind of thing, right? He's meant to die, but at a very specific time. Mm, maybe he's like Gandalf. He, uh, yeah. he, he died, but he's going to be back a little bit later Sorry, on. Just pulling the heartstrings here of the fans, of the, the viewers. Um, and then, you know, bringing him back as a reborn, like a phoenix coming back stronger than ever <laughs> in the next week. I think that's what's going to happen. Well, we've got Queen versus Sharp here. Everything is opening up normally. These two players, finally, we're going to get some ZVT. Been the star for this matchup all night. Yeah. And uh, so far, we do have a bit of a change of pace, though. We have uh, a bit of a matriarchy, you know, Queen currently in the the commander seat with his one win over Snow. And he's probably going to be looking to, you know, get his own pseudo all kill in the sense of just dispatching these remaining players, even though he's not able to get the prize anymore. Oh, he can. Yeah, very... if oh, he, he can. If he kills all the Protoss. All the Protoss players. My bad. My bad, guys. My bad, guys. Yes. He needs to kill all the Protoss players, then he can get the all kill prize, of course. Yeah, I think there's something else there as well. This uh, KCM is now sponsored by LG Ultra Gear. So I think they've added a prize uh, on there as well, like a monitor or something something like that uh, so if the uh, queen does manage to reverse sweep the entire protoss squad after taking out sharp then he will get that 2.2 million plus the lg monitor i think you just like give snow the monitor though like just as a <laughs> like hey you know i i earned i i, I got this all kill but uh, you were actually earned this <laughs> yeah 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 i can see that <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but <laughs> that would be the honorable thing to do. Now, Queen, as his speed finished up, he will be able to pick off this SCV before it can make its way into the main and really confirm the tech. Um, but he gets in here, sees the natural, he sees the amount of drones, and Queen's actually going to take the base over here at the bottom center. This has been a very trendy play hmm. on this map in this matchup. Take that base rather than the base... Uh, that would be normally reserved for the third of the Zerg player, and then uh, build up into a Hydralis Defiler army and take the fourth between yeah. your third and your natural, which makes it a lot safer. Yeah, in terms of like unit flow and like being able to like, you know, put all your rally points onto this high ground plateau, it just naturally works out a lot better for that kind of style at least. And um, yeah, I would say it makes a lot more sense playing like that. And even in um, Zerg versus Protoss, it can be interesting to play that way to like kind of give yourself a guaranteed fourth base to take safely later on to not make things a little bit more complicated. It, 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 yeah, it's, for whatever reason, it does seem to be a little bit more trendy these days to have this approach to the expansion part thing, and I think there's a lot of reason to it. And I, I, I think it's very valid and probably really strong on maps like this because of this high ground plateau especially. Yeah, it really seems to be one of those strategies that evolved out of necessity because of the map. And Zerg versus Terran is one of those matchups that is most affected by maps and the way that everything is positioned. It's incredibly important. Um, and it does lead to some very like different approaches to the matchup uh, when new maps are established, when new maps are placed into the pool. And it's good to see... Uh, you know, Zerg's finally figuring out the optimal way to play here right before this map probably goes out of the pool. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> oh, um, it's nice to see Sharp is um, on brand with his turret timing here, you know, living on a knife's edge, making sure these bunkers and turrets are finishing up just on the nick of time before taking some critical damage from these mules that are now making their way back into the main base with eight as well. So one showing against CVs and only a one turret able to fire on this main mineral line. It's a very difficult base to defend against mules and it looks like Sharp's choice is just to put on the pressure and try and like, you know, at the very least bluff Queen into turning around. But so far he's not taking it. He's just going to dive onto the other of these turrets and there's not enough time for the SCVs to repair that one in the main. So now this whole position is completely opened up. A lot of mining time being lost here. If he's safe back at home and doesn't take any damage to this, this is crazy good for Queen. 
Yeah, he's going to finish up two sunken colonies. The third is not quite there yet. These Mutas are going to come back, but they get caught in the middle of the map. This is a great kill for Queen Sharp. Pushing up towards the natural. He does turn to move towards the third now, though. That third has no sunken colonies in defense. Does he know about it? It seems like he's just hanging out on top of the plateau, trying to re, uh, tr trying to connect his two armies, reinforce these positions. He does get everything together, but a lot of the Marines do fall. This army is looking strong, though, and Queen was forced to pull all of his drones away from that bottom right, expecting that the Marines were coming that direction. He actually scans there, sees it, and is actually going to head on back home, not sending anything to go and kill that base. Instead, focusing on the defense back at home, realizing there's no drones at that location. Yeah, I think uh, Queen was worried about him splitting off like two or three Marines to so right. just run in there and gun down all the drones. So that's actually really smart from Queen. And, and, and now that he's saved that little tiny bit of economy, it's going to make a big deal now that he goes back to start mining there and has those four drones that he doesn't need to make anymore. So I really like this from Queen. He's being very thoughtful and careful in his approach to the game. He needs to be a little bit careful with um, how he um, engages with the mutas from now on because these mutas are already softened up and he, his only map control is the mutalisks right now. So he needs to be very careful with how he engages from this point onwards because if he makes a few missteps, it can spiral out of control very quickly. The galaxy brain play from Sharp would have been to just send a couple of Marines over to the towards the base, you know, blocking any transfers uh, from getting down to the bottom right. But he sends everything back home. Now he's got a really big army of Marine Medic put together with this four racks play. He's managed to field a very sizable force of Marine Medic to push everything back across the map. Will he be able to get down here to the third base, though? The, the, I didn't see the hydralis then i'm not sure if that's uh in play just yet uh, but he needs yeah, something extra to stop this bio force from getting down there and just ravaging his economy oh these five marines are going to split off try to go for that base they end up getting picked and now the force is looking much much weaker for sharp in the middle of the map here yeah, I think both players have been cutting heavily on their tech. So even though he's, I think he's got a Hydro Den or a Queen's Nest, but I don't think he's got the tech fully online yet. And the factory was really late from Sharp as well. So like both players have had to like cut their tech respectively because they're both committing into units so heavily. And the, the damage that Queen did to Sharp early on was like sufficient enough to really force Sharp to want to try and get some damage done with these Marines, which is now coming back to haunt him a little bit because he hasn't really done any dents into Queen besides just slowing Queen down a little bit. So... I, I, and he hasn't got vessels or anything so his own timings are uh, hindered enough that i'm a little bit concerned for sharp sharp is not taking great trades with these mutas either every time queen flies in he's getting at least two marines and there's hardly any damage going down on the mutas he's not reacting quickly enough he's not stimming running forward and hitting the mutas when they come in for the attacks just like this every time queen comes in he's getting kills and there's hardly any uh, return fire from sharp it's not looking good for sharp right now he needs to push down towards that base or fall back and wait for the the uh vessels to come out so he can push this away push it away these mutas but sitting out here in the middle of the map i don't know about it i feel like queen could eventually overwhelm this position uh, as he builds up more and more mutas but is he transitioning we've got some buildings in the main base that actually might be his transition point here um, getting into lurkers before sharp comes out with those vessels and actually puts the pressure onto the third or the natural yeah i mean both players have slowed down their relative tech timings by a good like minute or two i would say so it's kind of interesting to see see this we, we see hive coming online before even lurkers uh finally now defile a mound being made so he, now he'll probably make some lurkers as an afterthought and then we'll but we might i think we might see mainly just this like yeah the, the sort of go straight into hydro defiler kind of style and um we'll, we'll only maybe see like a few lurkers initially just to make sure he doesn't get overwhelmed but i really like this game state for queen i mean the vessels are so slow they're like going to be finishing up at around 12 maybe 12 minutes 30 and that's just just too slow yeah the damage earlier on with mutas in the main base of sharp it's just a little bit too much she wasn't able to return fire in any serious way 
On third base has been mining uh, happily without any drone losses for a little bit too long. Uh, great move so far from Queen. And uh, another base is going to come up here for Sharp. He's going to try to start expanding out on the map. Um, but this is from a deficit. It's going to be really tough for him to deal any damage. Maybe he needs some lotto ship. Maybe he needs something. Uh, like that to actually deal serious damage to Queen and bring him back in this game. Yeah, no, I think he does have to force the issue. He has to do something that's really like high risk, high reward, because I, I don't think maintaining the game state is as good as it should be in this position for him. And he's even going to be like getting his production exposed. Um, do does get an irradiate down onto those mewers, but pretty good split from Queen mitigates the majority of the damage done. Now he can swing back in and force another irradiate and get on top of a science vessel for a snipe. And killing one science vessel, even though you're taking a lot of damage, this mute stack being irradiated is still an okay trade for you like it is kind of unfortunate he's losing that many of his mirrors but to be honest with you it's really hard to get value out of those mirrors at this stage in the game so you know getting a science vessel snipe and forcing out a couple of irradiates is actually pretty big damage indirectly because that's like two to four irradiates at least that won't be available to start irradiating these defilers critically and start laying siege to the zerg right and you know there is this option now with all the mutilists being killed doesn't lotto ship become way stronger we don't have that extra defense in the main base that could push sharp to uh, take a risk on just a bunch of drop ships coming out like four drop ships into the main base can completely flip the game on its head uh, if they're not caught by scourge and muta is just flying on top of them immediately uh, as they start to aggress so let's see uh, if Sharp decides to go for a play like that, there's still a lot of units in the main, and we've got a Defiler there, so ostensibly, Queen is ready for this, but uh, the spread of Marines as you drop out with four dropships, it's hard to deal with, even at the best of times, when we've got units in position already. Right. Yeah, it's just so risky going for that Lotto dropship play, hence the name. It, is that why we're probably not seeing it? Because Sharp understands that if it doesn't bear fruit, he's just so behind and probably dead because he won't have the kind of vessel count. He's already behind the curve in terms of tech, so if he slows himself down anymore, he has to do critical damage. So it puts a lot of pressure on that drop being super successful and it's just maybe asking a bit too much of that strategy and look at that losing another vessel to his uh, hopes of just irradiating a pair of scourge for a good trade even that doesn't go his way so so far it does get the snipe, the snipe on the defiler there though that's pretty critical so um, there's a little bit of life in here for sharp if he can come down here and start laying siege to the zerg maybe there's some hope but <sighs> shutting down this base is the only thing that's going for him right now i don't think queen super cares about that he is going to be able to deny the fourth for now. We've got one factory in the front. Um, I don't see an armory. One thing that we saw from Flash in his return to the ladder was uh, adding on triple factory with an armory really quickly so that he could really uh, smoothly transition into massive tank army with a bunch of marines and vessels supporting that uh, as you go up into that fourth gas you're actually able to support quite a few factories uh, alongside these uh, vessels as well but uh, we don't have that fourth base out for sharp just yet and we only have the one factory with no add-ons so that's leading me to believe that sharp is not uh, adapted to that play just yet yeah I, it's a style choice I, I think you only see some players go for that they're much more likely to say like go for bcs or something they're more comfortable with as a transition rather than to, like throwing down the, the free factory some players are also um they like the variant where they they do the transition and they go mines first so they like mine up the map and then do the tank transition and do more of like a mechie transition and fully but the biomech style is a good middle ground to kind of not like you know commit too heavily into it but it's going to be maybe getting the counter on this fourth base again is sharp and this can start to become annoying like denying it the first time is 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 not that big a deal but denying it a second time is now okay now we're starting to do some pretty critical damage to the potential uh, zerg infrastructure because that 300 gas a minute that he's losing out on is actually going to, going to become a big deal very quickly and yeah uh, any delay on it now is going to be absolute uh, great damage done indirectly to the infrastructure of queen at the very least, so he's got that going for him. But now these ultralists are going to be starting to churn out, Sam. 
Well, Ultra is actually not good against Battle Cruiser. I thought he was going for a uh, Hydralis Defiler side. What? Where did this Defiler come from? My god, just gets here into the natural and puts a plague on every single unit in the rally point. This is a huge swing for Queen. He drops another Dark Swarm there. Uh, the Ultras are not going to fare too well. I don't think that's, that he's actually paying attention to that right now, though. If he if he was, he would just stim and kill every single Ultra, but he's being so distracted by the uh, attack into his natural and uh, these vessels going down that he's actually not able to deal with that at all. This extra starport in the front is going to get picked off as well. Now there's enough chaos for Queen. I think he's going to be able to push out on the map pretty strongly. Again, the fourth base gets denied though. That is actually a really big kill at this point. He's denied this so many times. It's going to be really hard for Queen to get that fourth gas online and he's taking a lot of damage from these well-placed Marines here behind the mineral patches finally will be cleaned up dude where the hell did that defiler come from though <laughs> yeah it was a defiler from narnia yeah, it was kind of wild like he must have sneaked it around from his third base location and walked it all the way up to the north and all the way around the outside of the map and then snuck it from the top right into the natural expansion very 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 interesting attack vector but does really pay off in a great spectacular way trying to get away with these ultra lists being hunted down by those sharking vessels but do get a couple of radiates out for their trouble needs to be careful not to just lose those vessels to be to be gobbled up by some scourge later on those so needs to return them very quickly to the the, the safety of these bio forces or which are basically supporting the vessels you can think of the vessels as your main army in a sense and the tank the, the marine are like your supporting units and your tanks, your artillery. Pretty good size army over here in the middle of the map. Vessels are coming out to try and get a bunch of free radiates. How many will be punished by Scourge? So far, none, as they all return back to this army. And the ultras are getting picked off in small groups, small chunks around the map. This is not looking good for Queen. If he keeps losing ultras like this and taking these uh, big, powerful radiates, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He's actually... Wow, Sharp is sending his army way over towards the bottom right potentially but there's nothing over there to, to fight he actually keeping the army in the middle of the map is probably going to be a better call Ooh, saving all of those vessels is really important so many skirts were just wasted by queen that's a lot of gas and queen is actually strapped for gas he's just now finished his fourth base trying to take this main base on the right hand side that preemptively sharp was already going to kill before it got made it was interesting but um yeah with this fourth gas finally queen would have some um more life in this game that extra 300 gas a minute is critical and does allow him to keep making things like scourge and what have you to keep sniping the vessels i think like there's just barely enough for queen that he's going to be able to get his fourth gas online stabilized but it has given a bit of time for sharp to, to, to do so himself as well I'm not sure if he's remaking those starports he was trying to make earlier into his own main base now and going up to BCs again, or what he's going to do as a follow-up from this. He is taking this base at 9 o'clock. Having that full, full gas available to him does basically give him endless... There's the BCs, so I think I think he's at least got the um, two starports churning out bad BCs, but I imagine he's also got a third starport made in his main base at least somewhere. I'm surprised that this base didn't go down uh, on this side. I felt like Sharp was actually going to get that kill, but... Uh, he's not able to get in there just yet. Uh, Marine's going to make their way down here. Does he have a Defiler with this? Looks like the Defiler just going to barely make its way up here in time. Drops a Dark Storm and a Plague on the Battle Cruisers, which is great. A good, good value out of the the uh, Defiler there. But this base is going to go down, and probably he can just... Oh, another nice snipe there. He can probably just uh, repair these two BCs in the Mineral Line and send them out once again. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Here's the Marine Force uh, breaking this. He actually needs to send the Marines back right away uh, to deal with the next attack that's coming. He's wasting a bunch of time down in the bottom right, killing off the larva with those Marines when they need to be over here helping out, uh, defending this base. Battle cruisers are doing a fantastic job dealing damage to these uh, uh, Ultras on the ground, but it seems like Queen is actually going to break through here with a little bit of help from these Mutas. Wow, I'm actually kind of impressed. He also managed to mow down all of those vessels with the Mulis. Now the fourth base is getting countered, though. Marines cleaning up the drones, and it's 
flying the gas being mined though some scourge flying in from the main base to help pick off the remainder of those battle cruisers but the repair was just barely good enough to keep that battle cruiser alive it was really low on hp it was kind of crazy like that that cruiser surviving is kind of insane now now that now there's a lot of damage being done to, to queen in this bottom right and he's siphoning off the lings that are rallied out he denied the get the, the base at the six o'clock so there's no gas being mined there queen's going to be depleting his other geysers now this is getting a little bit wild actually i'm kind of it's kind of crazy that sharp is finding a way of making this work but so far he's doing it yeah he doesn't need that fourth base like he wants to get that online as soon as possible to get back onto two base mining but as long as he keeps the zerg here on just three bases he knows that that third gas will mine out soon he's already uh, you know delayed long enough for the the main and natural to run out of gas yeah. it's such a small trickle of ultras coming out defilers are, are almost not going to be an option at this point they're so necessary but they just cost so much He's even going to pull the lurkers now. You know this is desperation mode with Queen pulling the lurkers from the third base to actually join this fight. Uh, the Marines are actually going to be catching a lot of the reinforcements, but this is Lings on, and Ultras on top of the production of Sharp now. This is getting really insane. The radiates are going to be key here to remove some wow. of these and uh, kill off some of these Ultras, lowering their HP so that the uh, supporting units can break through. These battle cruisers are going to be protected by a D-Matrix. He saves it. Oh my. My goodness, Sharp is breaking through to the natural. Both players are almost on top of each other's production facilities here. The base at the natural is going to be taken down. Everything popping out of these barracks is just getting minced. Sharp, does he have a bunch of bunkers at one of these bases? As long as he's got a good, strong defensive position on his side of the map, I think he's going to be okay as he pushes into the main base. He's going to be able to kill all the tech. Wow. I mean, I hope there's ultras that are popping out of those free eggs. And even if there are, I don't think that's going to be enough. Like this is this is crazy from Sharp. Like he was looking like he was pretty much out of this game not too long ago. Now he's in the commanding position. Finally the throne comes and he might just barely have enough here for Queen to clean this up. But the tech is being targeted down by those BCs. He will not be able to continually make scourge anymore. And he's not even got enough to make enough scourge to maybe kill these BCs right here right now. And the, the BCs will one shot the scourge as well unless they've got a lot of armor upgrades. So yeah, this is kind of a real rough spot for Queen to be in. He might even lose some of these drones. Wow, this is insanity. What a game <laughs> to finish. What a week. Yeah, what a week just in general, man. He's going to pull back the BC. He knows that he needs some more defense. Eventually, there will be Hydras or whatever pop out and deal with that. So he got to keep this alive. Oh, the SCV's not on the bunker in time. That bunker will go down. Pull the SCV's. Get on that last bunker. Oh, my God. Sharp's a little bit slow on it. And he might not be able to save the bunker. No, the bunker goes down that's uh, so painful if only he'd had that surrounded earlier with the scvs he certainly doesn't need the mineral income right now he's got 1700 in the bank he just needs to keep these bases alive and remake some of these barracks so that he can bring this back he can't he hasn't even got enough space oh to build the depots God. to stabilize. Like he's going to struggle for building locations at the moment. Just he's trying to squeeze in all these depots again to be able to start to make units. Meanwhile, that'll give a tiny bit of time for Queen to maybe squeeze out a few drones. He has got this base being remade at 6 o'clock. Desperately trying to... I don't think he need that many drones. That's how much he wants gas, you guys. He's like, how many drones are we mining gas? Sir? Yes, all of them. Oh. <laughs> yes, he's sending in all the drones. No barracks no bunkers were reproduced here oh my goodness he's actually gonna get through he's gonna break this the irradiates oh very good but God. queen with the presence of mind to pull away that ultra that's been irradiated just to make sure it doesn't kill any unnecessary or get any unnecessary kills on lings more marines are out though he is able to produce once again he's got 40 supply open to start making marines again there's a spire over here at the third He's just barely hanging in there, man. Queen, he's going to start to lose drones. 18 kill battlecruiser is dealing so much damage. There's no anti-air. How are we not building spores right now as Queen? He's going to lose so much because of this. And GG! What? <gasps> Unbelievable. <laughs> You're kidding me. This one battlecruiser clutches it out. That is insane.
he gets the clapper uh, and the head shake there from KCM. Oh my goodness. How could the got repaired earlier? Oh my god, what is going on in this week of KCM saying? I'm enjoying it though. I'm all about it. Oh. <sighs> Dude, it's just wild. No more all kill for this week. Queen has been taken down sharp versus best for Bisu. It's going to be our next match. Wow, just when I thought that this series, this week of KCM couldn't get any more insane, another fantastic game. Their Queen gets taken down by sharp and an absolute nail biter. It's... <laughs> Yeah. What is even happening, Shun? I, I'm thankful that we like you know put on the earrings and did the fusion dance before the cast just so that we could keep up with the power level of this game. Like these guys are moving so fast, we're struggling to keep up with our eyes, but we were just barely managing it. You know, like we're not quite on their level, but we're high enough that we can kind of sense what they're doing. You know what I mean? Right. My voice, you guys can hear, is starting to go. There's been so many hype moments in this cast. I mean, we're expecting a few, but it's just been hype moment after hype moment over and over and over again. And I'm starting to fall apart, but I'm loving it. Let me go ahead and take a nice rest after this cast and uh, get prepared for next week, man. It's just, <laughs> that's what I'm going to be looking forward to for the whole rest of the week. Seriously, this has been amazing. Yeah, no, it's really weird how like earlier on in the season, I was saying basically like, like, oh, like every week's just been getting better and better. And unironically, it has been like that, hasn't it? Where it's like, it's just been getting more and more intense and things haven't let up yet. It's just been getting, it's almost like, yeah, like a pressure cooker and the pressure is been building constantly and i'm all about it saying i love to see this raw intense starcraft where players are whittling each other down to a nub like that it's almost like two chess players that are so confident in trading off their pieces their hands are moving at lightning speed they just know the calculations it's like i'm still gonna grind you down and kill you with my tiny last little army here that you didn't manage to figure out 50 moves ahead that's right it's a little bit of a shame we've got Troy here, TV, TVP, for potentially our final map. I don't know how Sharp is going to try to play this one out, but it it is pretty tough to deal with a Protoss player on this map. It's Troy, of course. We've got the assimilators at the front with uh, the simple fact that if you can kill one of those assimilators at the Terran base, you completely lock them out of ground army getting out into the map. And right. it's just so tough to deal with. Uh, we saw, I guess it was last week, right? Um, or was that a, even a couple of weeks ago where Light did that insane um, three base play where he went directly yeah. to three CCs and then Yes, he was uh, bottom right. Was that Best who uh, did a recall into his main and killed his assimilator? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. What it a was crazy a couple of weeks that was. Yeah. yeah, that was a really good game. And the, the most recent week, the crazy Troy game you're thinking of is um, Snow versus Queen. Right. You know, the fight over six o'clock with the Guardians. Yeah, that was wild too. So we are. Uh, you know, this map is known for hosting some amazing games, but in this matchup. Uh, it's rare. It's very rare. Let's see what Sharp can do. He's coming out with the first Vulture, targeting onto this Zealot, but the uh, Vulture is actually being targeted by the Dragoon. It's going to go down here in a moment. One more shot will finish that. And probes are making their way over here, too. What are these doing? Oh, if he just got the surround on that Dragoon, he probably would have finished that off, but now, actually, Sharp's going to be pushed back, and he can't take his natural just yet. Probes actually can trade the um, battle calculations on certain fights. Fights. Say mm -hmm. if it's like only Marines left, like two pits from a particle beam is one Dragoon shot. So there are very niche situations where like a probe getting in like two shots on a Marine can actually make a big deal. He's putting on the pressure right now. Sharp actually has to move. This is one of those situations, a weird situation that comes up only on Troy, where it's like, dude, if you don't come out here and fight me right now, I'm going to kill this assimilator and then you're going to be locked out of this game. You're not even going to be able to play anymore. And he yep. does force him to come out here. Sharp is going to push and bring the tank forward. But he loses an SCV kind of for free. Now can he kill the tank? On high ground, I just don't see it happening. Marines are going to push back. All these Dragoons can't get that extra shot 
uh, on the dragon with the tank. He won't be able to kill any of these. He should be able to start a bunker here, though, on high ground in just a moment. Yeah, so far so good for Mr. Jinsu, looking very sharp indeed with his openers. Hopefully that can maintain itself because, I mean, one small misstep and, like, the four dragoons run in and snipe the tank, so you need to be very cautious still, even though you got the high ground advantage. And he's going to go into the four dragoons now just before the second tank is um, able to be uh, shooting back at the dragoons, but two of the dragoons very low on HP, so Best needs to be careful here because two of those dragoons can just bite the dust of those arc like cannon shots from those tanks doing 30 damage shot so really heavy hitters even though they're not in siege mode you'd be very cautious with your dragoons being pretty cautious here best somehow keeping all of those alive i really don't understand how they were in that army and fighting with the tanks but just barely staying out of range of them every single time um, playing with fire though uh, best just keeping that alive um, by the skin of his teeth. Now forcing the vulture here into the center left. That's not really where it wants to be, but it kind of has to go over here now and just lay down all of its mines at the third base. Otherwise, it will be taken out. Here comes Sharp with a little push. He's got a few Marines. This could go well. It could also fall apart uh, brutally uh, if Best gets the right snipes. However, quite a few of these dragons are low, as we mentioned earlier. So maybe if he takes this engagement a little bit poorly and a mine connects or something like that, or the tanks target down the correct dragoons, he could just pick off a lot of these. Oh no, the tank is stuck! Oh. The, the Marines are blocking the tank. That's a critical error there from Sharp. He actually had a good little pocket of um, high ground to work with to prevent the Dragoons from getting a favorable trade. So he was safe and chilling there for a moment. But the, the tank's getting blocked like that is a critical error. Yeah, he should have um, manually pathed his Marines to not let that happen, unfortunately. Like, that's what happens sometimes when you control your units individually and you've got your Marines and tanks on different hotkeys and suddenly you're trying to run your tanks away from the front from getting sniped. You're not telling your Marines to move either. So... Yeah, a little bit of a miscalculation there from Sharp. Big management issue on his controlling. Uh, I, I, would, I would say, like, this is a little bit of a worrisome situation now for Sharp because he hasn't really accomplished a lot. And we've got the Reavers coming up to pressure him. And we already, like, got a tank sniped. It's a little bit, a little bit worrisome, I would say. A bit worrisome indeed, and a base over here. Definitely the right choice from Baz, just... I'm going to go ahead and grab that island with the shuttle that he was going to produce anyway to make the uh, reaver harassment happen. Everything just flowing into itself, making this a very strong play from Bass, and he's going to drop the reaver in the main base. Looks like there's definitely enough to handle this attack, and a great pull away on that tank, making sure he doesn't lose any of these, but they're very low now. He's got to be careful with that. Running right into the turret. Oh, he loses it. Whoa, that was a big turnaround. That's a big moment. Best just what? lost his shuttle for free. Kind of crazy. I mean, that is kind of crazy. Like, a little bit uncharacteristic of Best. That's something like you'd expect out of YSC, not Best. So, yeah, unfortunately, he's, he's, he's looking a little bit more like, what's it? Oh my god, the Dragoon just barely doesn't block in time. If that was rallied differently, that would have blocked. Unfortunately, he didn't notice and didn't re-rally the gateway, nor would he have been able to calculate the gate. The Dragoon was going to be finished up in time. Really unfortunate here for Best. More damage being done in the main base. Sharp is very good with his Vulture controls so he's doing a great job target firing those individual probes down with those vultures getting maximum value out of those vultures even that one vulture there with five kills alone so big big damage done for sharp and that's got a lot of life uh, given to him now and a lot more wind in his sails for him to blow forward with dude snow has to be ripping his hair out right now how is his squad throwing this lead that he's gifted them in this series? Best just falling apart, losing his shuttle like that, flying into a turret, and then back at home not having anything in the wall to defend against this vulture attack. This is exactly how you lose to someone like Sharp. Right, right. Now, Sharp, Sharp is, is a very good player, but usually he's the kind of player that wins with, like, his his tactical control over his units in the game and the game stay. Whereas if he, if you're in an advantage against him and he's got to be forced to come to you, like, it's, it's, Sharp isn't someone like um, Flash or, you know, the, the, he's not really super cerebral. He's a very talented player. He's a smart guy, but he's not quite on the same level as some of these other Terran players. So he does kind of rely a little bit on these, like, sort of, like, mini games of the tactical 
tactical engagements with the vultures to kind of get small leverages that he can then utilize in his timing pushes as follower. Absolutely. He's the one who gets the vultures in like 90% of the time. He's going to be able to deal damage to you. And he relies on that damage to give him a bit of an advantage so that his slightly weaker, maybe less uh, perfect control push uh, than other Terran players is actually going to be able to get the kill on a strong uh, domineering player like best. Oh my god, that mine connects on the entire uh, force here that was meant to be stopping and slowing down the reinforcement train of Sharp. And now that that's been badly damaged, Sharp should actually be able to push out with tanks and vultures and kill that and then move forward to reinforce freely uh, his position here. And it is a beautiful position indeed. Turrets are coming up everywhere. He's got four goliaths ready to snipe that shuttle the moment it comes in he's uh, uh, in like a little pocket here just below this ramp and he's almost in range of the nexus he's just about to get into a position where he can actually start to hit that another mine goes off two reavers over here on the other side gonna be slowing down those reinforcements it's just best plan right now to stop reinforcements as long as possible until he's got a huge critical mass of zealot dragoon to break this yeah it's really beautiful stuff he even circumnavigates those dragoons in the center with some vultures to reinforce the position so these dragoons are really not accomplishing anything like uh, best was hoping for even going to be repairing up some of these buildings is sharp as well keeping the spotting alive and well on the high ground it also glitches out the ai of the dragoons a lot a lot of wasted damage will go into those buildings when the protoss player finally decides to move out and it's kind of crazy the amount of shots these buildings can absorb from the dragoons in those engagements as well it's so valuable to have even just more one, even just one building is great, but if you've got like two buildings to soak up damage and scout for the tanks, it really becomes annoying for the Protoss player. Ticking time bomb here. That one tank is able to hit the Nexus over and over and over, and eventually it's going to be able to take it out. Best has to pull the trigger. He's got to make this work right now. He's going to come forward with the shuttle. The shuttle not being targeted down very quickly, but it does go down in the end. Great mine connection there on all the zealots. So the zealots just vaporized, and now there's none left to deal with the tanks here. The dragoons are all getting cleared up, and dude, snow has got to be just red in the face right now. How can this be happening? Yeah. Yeah, the great ape is frustrated at his own great apes here. Yeah, I mean, he, I, you, you can't blame him. He basically handed them this week on a platter and they're fumbling it right now. They're like the, the waiter from the first Tomb Raider game on the PlayStation, constantly trying to follow you around, but just clattering with that tray and like seeming a little bit feeble at the moment. And you just want to lock them in the freezer, Sam. Oh my goodness, the next is getting lower and lower and lower. The timer is running out here for best to break this. He's going to pull the trigger. One more attack. Is this enough? Zealots, even if it's enough to kill the units at the bottom of this ramp, there's still the tank over here on the right hand side, which is just pummeling this Nexus over and over. This is absolutely wild. He's going to absolutely destroy Best here. I don't think there's any chance Best can win. He had this third base uh, on the island, which can't really be touched by Sharp, but it doesn't matter. He had his core sniped, his tech reset for a few moments, so he couldn't even pump out that many dragoons. Oh, and a huge mine oh hit! Those pros, so many probes just died to those two mine detonators. Absolutely insane damage. Just insult to injury right now. This is all just to like slap it into Snow's face. Like we thought that Snow had plot armor, but no. Like it's the reverse is true. Like if anything, it's like they're trying to like build Snow up so strong just that we can fall all the more harder, Sam. Flashbacks of previous games of uh, Pro League where Snow is carrying out of control the entire game and his team still finds a way to lose. Bass stabs out. Sharp's going to go to the final game. The reverse sweep here. Oh my Absolutely god. Bisu. All Protoss hope is on him now. He has to win this or Snow is going to explode. Oh my goodness, guys. If you could have heard our mutual reactions to seeing Troy as the final map. Oh man, what a shock yeah. to both of us. Like, how is it happening again here? Bisu going to be sent out versus Sharp on Troy.
Oh my, like everything is going in the Protoss' favor right now. Seriously, like this is such a Protoss' favorite map. It's nuts. I mean, if, if and now if Bisu still loses, can you imagine how mad oh. Snow would be? Can you imagine? It's, it's Troy as well. Like it's Bisu and it's Troy. Like yeah. you'd be, you'd be. I don't even Flaming. know the emotional range. I don't even know the emotional range that he'd be going through. But I, I, I wouldn't want to be in the Protoss dugout. Well, you know what? Props to the Terran squad for actually leaving Sharp for the final Terran player, right? This guy is so good at TVP. He's incredible in this matchup. Um, he also took out Queen, right? Which is just insane that he managed to win that game. It was so freaking close. Yeah, I would say Sharp is like not the not a top tier player in the sense of like he's not SS tier, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's not like super top tier, but he's just below that. He's like one of those more promising like second tier players that you really have to respect. Like he's he has got so much finesse to his game, and the fact that he forces the issue with his style by playing that like you know faster gas, faster vulture pressure, like force the issue with the, the that 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 kind of mentality. I actually kind of respect that more. Like it's it's been hard for him to find success with that you know what i mean and the fact that he's been able to do so I, I, you know more props to him yeah sharp's like a tn level of of power he's like uh you know not one of the strongest characters out there he's a great supporting character though and he puts a lot of effort into his play yeah you can absolutely TN see never it never stopped tn never, never stopped, stopped and that's why and that's why he had a chance against Cell, and that's why he was so relevant to that Cell saga, man, because he never stopped. Absolutely. Now, Bisu is going for double gateway. Um, absolute scumbag play. We're going to see uh, potentially a uh, almost definitely, actually, uh, a shield battery here at the front. He's just going to try and kill that assimilator. That is literally his only goal in this game. Yeah. Yeah. His cross maps are the rush distances a little bit longer than Bisu would like in this situation, but it's still very frustrating for uh, Sharp to have to deal with these two gateway proxy in the natural like this. It's, it's still a hard hold for him, but the, the cross map does give a few extra precious seconds for him to work with in that defense. Mm, Sharp is messing up the micro a little bit here, not spreading the Marines quite well enough off and there's the shield battery coming up the marines are not getting shots off here when they should be yeah. uh, pulling those back um he could be trying to block just that little entrance with the marines and or with the sev but he's again letting the sev get behind the marines this is a little bit rough he needs to just barely hold on to this that's all he needs to do right now i'm surprised he just doesn't build a bunker why not just build a bunker in between um the assimilators here and just hold try to hold um he's actually just going to try and do it completely with vulture and marine and now that there's two vultures there's a good chance he can save this but oh he's just gonna go for the assimilator 90 hp 40 31 there it is he gets it now the vultures can't even get out of the base i think this is gg just about I mean, it's, it, at the very least, it's going to really frustrate the game for sure. Yeah. Like, if this is a win, it's a, a back-breaking win. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, absolutely. I know what you mean. This is going to be so, just torment. You know, he's in that the hell realm here of Diablo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. The, oh, well, look at that. He actually got the vulture over. Hey, hey, hey. Nice job. Nice job. That was, that was pretty good. Well, you, when you play the game on harder difficulty, say, and if you still got the skills, you can still make it work. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Does pick off that, uh, what's it called? Um, energy of the hell. Shield battery, that's it. Can Sharp... <laughs> Can can he actually get a, a CC out here? Is that possible? Um, Bisu, I mean, he's just going to be putting on the pressure endlessly. And it looks like Sharp wants to go into a dropship. I mean, you need a dropship now, 100%. Just get out of your main. But uh, maybe he wants to go for like a vulture drop. That could be a way back into the game. I don't want to call it yeah. over, but it's, it's just so hard in this position. I think you have to make the dropship. You can't not make the dropship in this situation, right? Yeah, even to. if you're just using it as a ferry, you have to. Yeah, it's such an expensive way to get your 
uh, army out onto the map, um, not just in terms of m the actual monetary value of the dropship, but also just your attention as a resource is going to be sapped so hard by trying to get this out. Now some drag goods are out on the map. We've got mines in the middle. It looks like Bisu just wants to go around those and then try to get in here to the natural. Thank goodness Sharp was able to get this one vulture out on the map. Otherwise, I think he would have been a little bit boned here. Just not able to bring anything to the front. And there's only four Marines sitting here on the high ground. Dragoons would have absolutely wrecked that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as it stands, like, I don't know how Sharp... If, if Sharp can get any damage done with this vulture drop, though, we might see a very weird game where... He might... Do you reckon he could... Would you, if you were Sharp here, do you think that he should still take his natural expansion? Or would you consider, like, dropping an SCV and taking your island here? Or, like, do you, do you think that's a bit weird? You could just build a, a CC and just fly over to the island that's fine he's gonna take his natural kind of crazy but uh, once there's a bunker on the high ground there it takes a bit to actually break through that it's gonna take some time to get in there um nothing at home and this is gonna get in this could deal huge damage we don't have an observer so he's gonna put mines behind the entrance and oh my god this is gonna be craziness he runs away with the dragoon to make sure that he can uh, get away from these mines. And I mean, one dragoon takes a million years to take this out. So he's going to kill so many probes. It's going to be wild. And also running in with his army. Just oh, another mine connection there. So much of Bisu's army just went down because he's trying to clear this quickly. And he is not clearing it quickly. There's so much damage. I don't even know how many probes went down. That was There's wild. Like, Eight kills there. on this. There is not enough flex tape for how much damage was done there. Saying that was crazy. <laughs> Absolutely God. wild. The, 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 we, we even missed some of the damage because the observer had to, you know, like hide the mini map just to see what was happening under yeah. there. Like, it was crazy. Like, so many probes bit the dust right now. BC only on 26 applied to sharp on 41. <laughs> what? Oh my God. How has he done it? Snow is going to be going crazy. <laughs> Snow's going to be losing his mind. Uh, this I hope he's not watching this. I think he's just, he's probably just turned this off at this point. He's like, I, I just don't even want to. I just don't even want to see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did what I could. Let's just move on. <laughs> oh my God. More vultures getting in here. This is at least another six kills. Guaranteed. There's three. Ugh. There's another few more mines connecting here, killing off even more of this. One more vulture going to get out behind the mineral patches. And there's not even enough to put one probe on each mineral patch at these two bases at this point. It's no, crazy. And while, and while this one vulture is distracting those dragoons, we got another follow up drop coming into the natural just no. to clear up what little hope we had. <laughs> Get out of here, Sharp. Oh my goodness. This guy. This Dude. guy. Dude. That's we were every talking probe. about it earlier. We were talking about his his style. His his, his this is his brand, and yeah. he's the best, one of the best in the business at doing this. And this is the one thing that claws him back into the game. I mean, this is beautiful. I said it like almost jovially earlier on you know oh yeah maybe that like he gets in with a vulture drop and, and brings himself back in this game because i just thought it wasn't even going to be a possibility with the uh, the the size of the lead that bisu had accumulated from just killing that assimilator and if he had kept his dragoons back at home that would have been the case but he left everything out on the map he wanted to go across and put more pressure onto sharp whereas sharp yeah he just he never even thought about a drop he didn't even have it in his mind it seems like yeah very very peculiar honestly a little bit let down by bc from that but, uh, <laughs> imagine yeah, I mean... imagine snow you're let down <laughs> imagine <laughs> could you imagine man? Oh, imagine my. if they like were in the same building like you couldn't just like like you had to face each other after the match you know what i mean like, imagine the tension in that room <laughs> oh no oh yeah visa has gotta be it embarrassed about the, the way that this one's been going he is set up to defend on both sides but 
There's so many dropships flying around. Eventually, he's going to find some way in here. A tank gets dropped off. That's actually going to do quite some damage. He drops another vulture tank drop over here into the natural at the same time. Getting a mine here right on top of everything. Can he get this to connect? Oh, so close. Not quite able to get that. Looks like he will lose the dropship. Oh, please, Sharp, do not throw from this position. Yeah, can you imagine? Imagine Bisu still wins this game is what's so crazy about We don't, no one knows what's going to happen in this week of KCM. This, this is crazy. No. It's unprecedented. We are living in the simulation, okay? We have tr <laughs> Trump levels of plot armor going on. Everything's crazy. We don't know what's going on. Alex Jones could probably make sense of this, but we can't. No, we cannot make sense of this. This is just unbelievable. Sharp. Is it time to just float factories out into the front? It's going to be so cumbersome. And he just lost two dropships, or he lost one dropship uh, back there. He's actually just going to build them out in the middle of the map. Why not? Yeah, this is so crazy. You have to be crazy to make sense of what this is. This is, you know what I mean? Yeah. In a crazy world, the uh, sane man is insane. Is that how the saying goes? This guy, I mean. Ugh. <laughs> Absolutely so. wild. We we're going to have a, a... I thought there was actually a building floating out to take the third, but that's a barracks that was floated out. So we're still two base to two base. There's still some hope for Beast to come back, but he's so far behind. It's almost insurmountable. Of course, I said that just a moment ago about Sharp uh, before that drop came through, but it's going to be really difficult for Beast to find a way back into this one. Yeah, yeah, and also Sharp has, you know, has these options of like getting pretty easy to secure expansions. It's not like on other Terran versus Protoss situations where you have to push out and take your third. He can just take this island as his third to be super safe. Like, yeah, yeah this is a pretty, pretty comfortable position to be in a Sharp. So it's basically his game to lose if you think about it like that. But I mean, these you can still obviously win the game. It's just I, I really do feel like it's going to come down to whether or not Sharp makes any ma major blunders. I don't think that's going to happen. He's just going to roll across the map with these tanks right now. Two dropships in the main base going to be intercepted. One of them does go down, but anything comes out of them. The remaining dropship actually not decided to drop anything right now. They're on top of the buildings right now. So both you, both dropships go down about unloading anything in the main base for Sharp, for, for BC right now. And Sharp, meanwhile, using the remainder of the forces to push into natural expansion. There is a reaver out, but the shell's dangerously low. Reaver does get taken out, and the reaver looks so it's kind of a weird play on both sides. Both both players losing um, some pretty critical units there. Both utility of the dropships taken out from both sides, but there is still a pretty sizable force of Sharp now starting to lay siege to this natural expansion soon. Well, that was insane. If Sharp had just waited for like the bulk of the army of Bisu to come out to face this, like he needs all of his army to fight this army in the front, yeah. right? If he just waited for that to happen and then sent in the dropship, easy win here for uh, Sharp, but he actually sends the dropships in as he's starting to push forward, which results in both of them getting killed and actually Bisu having a hope, almost a hope against the hope with the hope army. A prayer. Yeah, a prayer here is what he needs. He's just, I mean, like, what does he need to have happen here to bring himself back? Like uh, some sort of drop with a mine connection connecting on like a huge clump of army. Maybe that would be possible. He just goes after the shuttle just to remove that. He gets rid of the shuttle. He gets rid of the reaver. GG is called. Sharp uh, wins. Oh my god, what? Could you, could, if you were going into this week, could you predict that Sharp was going to be the guy that like, was stepping? But when, it, when it all is said and done, Sharp is the guy left when all the dust is settled after oh all that craziness. God. It's just been back to back to back surprises over. Oh, over and over again hitting us with soul key going out first everything went into like a twilight zone and a weird we went into the 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 underground or whatever it's called the the upside down in this series down, yeah. absolutely Man, wild stranger things that's what damn sure <laughs> only one zerg win this entire week and it was over snow so at least queen was able to stop the rampage of snow but he opened up the way for Terra to take the week. So wild, man. So wild. Well, at least I mean, I'm, I'm Protoss got it, one point. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that performance from Snowy get we get one point. I mean, yeah, if you if you are Snow right now, like you there's either like two acceptable reactions. That one is like you're detached from it where you're like you're just done with it and you don't even want to think about it anymore because it annoys you that much. Or you want you wanna like do backflips off the wall in frustration. Uh, yeah. I mean I know what I would be doing. I would be just raging against the machine at this point. It was absolutely crazy that Brodos was not able to take a win this week. Bisu and Best falling flat on their faces on Troy of all maps. Yeah. Making some of the most just cringe mistakes, honestly. Like, what was that from Best with the shuttle just flying into a turret? Yeah, and then it's a the, uncharacteristic. I mean, the only option for Terran was to go for a drop in that last game, and Pisa just leaves everything out on the map. What is happening? It's like their pressure was getting to them. Maybe you know, Snow staring over their shoulder, like burning a hole in the screen with his <laughs> eyes, was too much for Pisa or Best to handle, and they just fell flop. They just flopped over, and then. I mean, it does seem like something like that happens. I mean, both players seemed a lot more flimsy than usual yeah kind of crazy i mean it's a tough nut for snow to swallow saying that's for damn sure so we can't say absolutely well guys we've run out of time i've got to get going this has been an incredibly long week of kcm i hope you enjoyed yeah. this insane series i i think this is one of the best of all time there's so many games that i'm going to be putting into my best of 2024 uh, pack it's absolutely I think, I think it, wild i think it's safe to say this has been probably the one of the most intense weeks ever yeah yeah like just at, at least three of the games have been like strong contenders of being some of the best games in their own right in terms of how crazy they were and also the week overall with how much was condensed into it i think you could argue that yeah that was probably one of the greatest of all time so guys, before you go, make sure to do us a little favor. Go down into the description. Go over to KCM's channel. Make sure to give him a shout out. You know, give him a comment, like, subscribe to his channel. Let him know that you appreciate uh, the English content. And oh, just go, go drink some water. Splash some ice cold <laughs> water on your face after that one. It's just take absolute wild. Yeah, take a nap. You know, drink a beer. I don't know. Lay down in the sun. Mm -hmm. Just like touch some grass. That's what I'm going to do right now, guys. Take it easy. Thanks for being here, Shun. It was a blast. Always, Sam. Thanks, guys.